Good morning. Okay, you know, uh, I always get naughty, Mr. Barnard. I tell people that I can find free start up here, Pratos Africans. Ons gebruik net Engels vir selfverdedering. For those who understand. Anyways, yeah. With that being said, I just want to say first of all, good morning everyone and thank you so much for being here. Let me first start, um, as you've seen, you know, I get to Bamba every now and then and chill with the big boys like Mr. President, so I need to know what you call a protocol. So I'm quickly going to observe the protocol Program Director, the EBL team, our hosts, thank you very much. Um, our distinguished guests, I think they've been mentioned, so I'm not going to mention names, but I'd like to say from MTN uh, Foundation, from MTN Business, our partners, University of the Free State Action Coach, our partners from the government as well, uh, Distia, SIDA, NYDA National, we will see they should join us later as well. And I would also like to acknowledge um, somebody who will be a guest speaker today, somebody who's been through the program, somebody who has shown, you know, who got in at this point, who has shown what growth is in terms of revenue, in terms of profits, somebody who has gone and shown people flames, somebody who shook uh, Deben ICC last year in November. I think somebody that we as free staters, we're very proud of. So he will come here and share with you exactly how to bamba and uh, chill, I mean, not chill, you know, fly with the big boys. <laughs> but most importantly, I'd like to welcome you, our entrepreneurs, the guys that we are actually um, inducting today, the people, you are the reason why we are here today. So I just like to say with these words once more, let's welcome you with a nice big round of applause. <laughs> All right, and, and then just one reminder um, is that uh, remember what we are doing today, I think uh, on the 29th of March, Lesala will explain how that is going to work. This will be broadcasted, everything that we are doing here, um, that we are saying, you'll actually get to see it with all other provinces, everything will be incorporated there. So with that being said, um, I would like to say um, protocol observed. Actually, that was the protocol slide. But as we know, you know, um, South Africa, everything being a bit slow, I had to, to be ahead. All right, so with that being said, let me start here. Well, I've been asked to come and share with you guys um, the six-step model on how to build a business. Now, the reason why my talk is based on this, I'm just coming to share with you and show you exactly how we are going to take you through the program. And mind you, this is just the part of the coaching. This is also the part of the university, which um, Mr. Barnard will go through it with you guys. So I'm going to share this so that you can see exactly the decision that you've made and what you've led yourself into. And also, why is it that you guys are needed? All right. Now, I'm saying to you, we are going to talk about the six-step model on how to build a finished business. Now, what is a finished business? This is the business, or oh, this is a business that is needed in today's economy in South Africa. Those businesses that have got what you call an end goal, so when you start a business, a whole lot of, and what is happening and the reason why we are so keen and the reason why we are so, it's important to share this keynote with you is that a lot of you guys go into business for two reasons, right? Number one, you go into business for a lifestyle so that when you make money and you bamba, you buy yourself a, a, a nice car, isn't it? Now, a lot of you go into business. The second reason you go into business literally just to create employment for yourself. Now, we are sitting in an economy where we need people to create businesses, to create employment through the businesses. But all you are doing is to create what? Employment for yourself. And that is called self-employment. And this is another thing where we are going to do a bit of reality check. You are going to get a bit upset with the truth that I'm going to show you. You guys who call yourself 
as the government calls you, entrepreneurs. Okay, but we'll get to that. Now, the best part about me coming from the background of medicine, I know exactly when people, I can make you sad and I can heal you at the same time. So we're gonna go through emotions uh, this morning. All right, so building a finished business in today's economy, there are four end goals that we need to address. There are four end goals that we are going to help you for you guys to reach. The first thing you need to build that business to what? To sell it. Okay, we always talk, hear people saying, I want to build this business, a generational wealth, to pass it to the next generation. But here's the thing, what are you passing to the next generation? The very first, the very, very first reason should be to sell that business. Now you start it, it's your baby, you don't wanna sell it because you're attached. If you do not follow the model of selling your business, this is where we get entrepreneurs who are into business and they don't know their numbers and they are so happy with it. You know, ah, no numbers, I'm not a numbers person. Numbers person, that's the bottom line. If you don't know how to sell your business, if you cannot read that balance sheet, if you cannot uh, build it, how are you going to sell that business? How can you even buy a business for that matter? So that's one of the reasons um, why you should be building that business. And this is why you're in this program, we'll take you through that. The second reason, which is, very, very important. Talking about franchising. The moment you mention franchises, what comes into your head right now, you think in McDonald's, you think in KFCs. And all these are international franchises. Where are those South African franchises? Now, if you think of it in the economy of today, where you see when decisions of entrepreneurship are not made by people who are entrepreneurs, we get into a space where somebody comes and said, hey, everybody start a business and we will fund you. Funding a startup, Funding people who, you know, with things or businesses that are not even tested, that you don't even know where they will get. Versus building a business, finishing that business. By finished business, you're talking about a McDonald's here. Okay, something that you can take, put into the same market, different place. If it hires 10 people, we're talking about now, when you find that, uh, that business and you put the same business that is finished here in Bloemfontein and you go put it in Botsabelo, same market. Okay, same market, different place, and it hires 10 people. What does that mean? It means you are putting something that does not need to develop to that level. It is finished. It can instantly hire uh, 10 people with immediate effect, as our president always says, you know. So isn't the, aren't these the kind of businesses that you want to build in the economy where we are saying small businesses are there to, you know, to create jobs? And I think the president made it very clear in the sauna that I had a, a privilege of attending this year when he said government is not there to build jobs and everyone is upset, government is a policy maker. And that's what, is the, the, what the government is there for. You know what, and this is what I love about president. When, you see, when you're an entrepreneur, he knows exactly how these things work. And people, he told people what people didn't want to hear. And you could hear how EFF responded. Said, you know what, you've killed the hopes of South Africa. But that, that is the truth. And that is why you are sitting here. All right. And then we are talking about you know, building legacy businesses where you want to, you know, from, you know, when, when you build generational wealth from one generation to the next, have you had, and this is the conversation that we had a graduation on Friday, we're talking about it, and talking about churches, by the way, um, me and Mr. Dion Barnard, and we, he mentioned the very important word, old money. How many of you are familiar with old money here? In my generation, in my family, I'm literally the first one who is starting that legacy of old money. So meaning that 100 years later, I need to start it today. Most of us, we come from this background of ours, you know, from red to riches. I myself, domestic worker mother, lived in one room, three kids. That's how we were raised. Road metric with a candle. If it finishes, that's where your study stops. Nowadays, it's ESCOM. You see, it doesn't get any better. So that's how some of us even grew up. This concept of old money, that's why we are where we at, actually. So we are opening your eyes so you guys get to know these things. And if you practice them, that's where you're going to get. And that's how we'll get our country forward. Not just by saying things and not implementing anything. So these are the things that you're going to teach you. And another thing that I'll tell you uh, where building businesses are concerned, especially in South Africa, we've got this culture of hustlership. That's why when somebody calls me a hustler, no, not really. You know, I, I'm glad that people <laughs> in the room don't understand that language, you know. You don't call me a hustler. I'm not a hustler. I'm a builder. If you go and read this word hustling, 
in the Bible anyway. Go read it. It's actually, it has got negative connotation into it. So I'm not a hustler. And you guys are not hustlers here. Any one of you is a hustler, you are not going to sign that contract at the end of the day. What are we talking about? We're talking about people, you know hustlers. You come in here, next thing you are busy trying to build this house, they say, hey man, there's another house, one that is half built, that side, you say, I leave this one, you jump into the next one, you wanna get married, you get into this partner, and then before, you don't even build anything, you get to know each other, you see another beautiful one, you stop this one, you jump into that one, you see those kind of people, they'll never build economy. Now, if you start your hustlership, you hire people, what happens? It doesn't work out, you jump into the next thing. How, how, how on earth are you going to build? Because building takes time, it takes patience, it takes methodologies. It's, you know, it's the faith that you're talking about, that you actually have to, you know, you, you need to sit there. Sometimes you don't even see that finishing line. You don't see how you'll finish that business. But because you've got the methodology, you've got the knowledge, and you've got faith, you have to move day to day. And that is what entrepreneurship is all about at the end of the day. So we are scrapping that with you guys, that culture of hustlership. There are people who will do it. And also this culture of if all else fail, business is the solution. That is not true. Because a lot of people have tried that. If all else fail, business is a... And I'm going to show you exactly how when you do a reality check just shortly, that that is so not true. Business is a career. Business is a profession. Business comes with knowledge just like any other. You want to be, you want to be a lawyer. What happens? You need to go to law school. You want to be, the, the only thing is that you may not have been to business school, maybe. Luckily, you guys are here. You have started already. Look where you, what we've done now. We have reversed the process. Now you are here. Okay, to be part of that. And you'll see many reasons why you need education, you need to formalize it and all that. That's what business is all about. Okay, now let me move from the protocol. Okay, luckily I have been, um, I've been introduced. I just want to say that as your coach now, what's also going to happen is that while the university is making sure that you've got credibility, you've got knowledge, and you, know, you, you are competitive out there, you, know, you're not, you don't get in there and find those people you know, there's a whole lot of excuses. Uh, so, Chief, you've been given a contract to fill in. You can't fill it in because the first thing that, ah, you know, I'm from previously disadvantaged. Previously disadvantaged, they are in. So this is exactly, that's why we have university as our partner. That's why you have accreditation so that you are credible as a business person. It's interesting that many people, people who are educated, education is so important that I can come in, I'm a medical doctor, and I'm in a business, in a space with people who've been doing it for 20 years, but just because of my credibility in terms of credentials, I stand out more than them, and people trust me more than them. Do you see what's happening? So that's exactly what you are doing. That's why we have the university here. But now, from coaching, what I will be doing together with other, we've got about 52 coaches across, you'll see, they'll come in and out to help you make sure that in your businesses, you know, you need to meet your bottom line, your sales and your profits, you know. And very important, as people, you are not the, a lot of people, their businesses run them. Now we are going to teach you to run your business. And actually when you run your business, what is business? Which we will define later on. That you have a business so you can have time to live your life. You can have a time to follow your dreams. Have you seen how many people live their lives, do this thing called businesses, you go and marry some other parent's child. You don't give them time. You bring kids to the world. You don't bring them time. You don't give them time, but you call yourself their parents. That is not how life is supposed to be. And this is one of the best benefits that the business can give you. But most importantly, when you talk about team, it's two things. One of them is a team, building that amazing high-performance team. And this is what coaching does. This is not theory. And talking about amazing team, Coach, think about your, you know, your Ronaldo. Think about your Messi's. They are in a team, high performing, and they've got what you call a coach. So check around the world. Everyone who's performing high or high performers, they normally have coaches and people who are actually guiding them. You know, it's another thing in South Africa. You talk about mentorship, but it's an, it's another thing. You know, being in this, being in institutions, 
um, also saving in the board of Saki, South African Chamber of Commerce um, and Industries and stuff. So you get to deal with a whole lot of businesses issues deeper and you see exactly what is happening out there. So these are the things that you are actually, you know, many are called for you are chosen, then we will actually give you, you know, uh, what do you call it? Information that has got an, that will give you an edge. You'll definitely be better than others who have not been through this program. That's why we structured it the way we did. And that's why it's as expensive as it is. And that's why we are grateful for companies, you know, your MTN that has shared the vision and said, you know what? We don't care how expensive this is. We want to build the economy. We will partner here and we'll come in and bring in resources. Let's find the entrepreneurs and make sure that we advance the cost of entrepreneurship in South Africa. All right. So today we've been told about Action Coach. The, the only reason why, um, okay, this will be part of my introduction to show you, um, here's the thing, and I would like to bring this one up. Um, what happens is that as black people, and I'll put it that way, these excuses, 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 excuses of a bar date, excuses of whatever that must come to an end. Okay, and that's exactly, that's what I'm saying. I stand before you here. When you're given an opportunity, you get in there, you leverage and you take it. I bought a Action Coach franchise in 2020 while I was in Las Vegas studying. Um, then COVID hit. I had to be literally be evacuated to South Africa, landed here. That was the last flight that actually landed. Otherwise, I would have been in America. Don't know what would have happened because we saw this was like a, it looks like a, uh, China America fight. We saw many people die there, so I'm glad that I was not in that uh, land. But what happened when you came back? Now it's scary. You are buying a global franchise which has got all the tools that are actually needed to advance entrepreneurs. And this global franchise, you get in there like, eh, hey, I happen to be, I'm the youngest person who's having this. Not just that. The guys, as you can see, the guy, for example, if you check the guy number two, number three over there, Darren, he's a chartered accountant, a retired chartered accountant. The third guy is a retired chartered accountant rescue practitioner, you know. Um, and the, we're talking about people who've been in their business and, you know, uh, for a long time. Now, it's scary, like, hey, how is this going to go about? But now, all I'm just saying here is that, and that's why I'm sharing this with you to say, if you get into a space, it doesn't matter. Business money does not have color. That's what it is. We are only three black people who are having this franchise in Africa. I'm one of the three, the other one is in Nigeria. Um, I came in there, I mean, it took one year, literally, it took one year to be on top. Now, how Action Coach works is that if per month you need to make minimum 150,000, otherwise you will lose your franchise. And now there are rankings across the globe, not just in South Africa, but across the globe, you know. I think I've shown you the old ones and stuff. That's why even last year, for the first time, Rookie Coach of the Year, the you know the coach the, the the best performing coach in Africa for that matter and it's based on one thing bottom line it's all about money they don't care about anything else what do you bring and what does this what does that mean it means the more money you make the more people you served in his book Reverend Daniel Lapin Ten Commandments of Made Money when they ask him what, what money is he defines money as it's the amount of work done so if you are not having money you are not making money it means you are not saving enough people. That's it. That's why we need to teach you marketing, how to go and get these people and serve them. Because there are problems out there that you could be solving. The more problems you solve, the more people pay you, the, money, the more money you can make. And people say money is the root of all evil. How so? Because people are giving you money for helping them. Either solve their problems, either you know, pull them out of their painful situations, or drive them to their goals which they want, you know, pull them from pain or drive them to their pleasures. Now, how is that root of all evil? Because that's at the end of the day, that's the only reason you get paid. But we'll, we'll discuss that just now. So I hope you get the concept to say, also one of the things that we're going to show you through a six step model is that to how to leverage, how to get on top, how to be a market leader, because that's what we want. We, we complain about ESCOM, that's exactly. If you wanna do it in business, monopoly is one of the things that actually you can monopolize and just empower others. If you are the best in the business, be the best. And then you can just bring others up. Because what happens is that we have a lot of people who are in business right now and they're taking it for granted. 
I mean, look at the tender system. You've got tender premiers you get in there, you get given 200 million tender, go build the road, you take it for granted, you chow the money, the next thing, the road is not built. One year, my heart broke going through Dragon's Back, that road closed down and one of the hotels closed down. So businesses closed down because somebody decided, I get the money, I won't do the job. So why then should you sit back if there are people like those that you know, that's exactly what they are going to do to your economy of your country. So it's very important. Business is a competitive place. But you don't compete to kill one another, obviously. You compete to be the best so that you can help uplift others, you can subcontract them, whatever it is. But we want the best business people in South Africa. All right. Now, that's enough. I think Mr. Kuhl has explained exactly what the business does. Let me say what I'm quickly going to do is that I'm just quickly going to give you, you know, that overview of what exactly you are going to do, understanding this thing called business that you're doing. Okay, why are you doing it and who are you doing it for? Now, very important, remember, also, this is something, uh, we will fund your business. Businesses are not getting funded. People are getting funded. People run businesses, businesses don't run people. And we have now, which is something that, that's why we are so big on personal development. People want to build great businesses, but are not great themselves. Isn't it? People told you, uh, you know what, I want to be, you want to have a business that's profitable, but up here, you are saying money is the root of all evil. <laughs> How do those two come together? Mamel, I want to be in a relationship with you, but my relationship with you, I'm saying women are evil. Now, how do you suppose to respect me? How do you even suppose to love me? And I want to be in a relationship with you. These are kind of things when you talk about you know, your personal development exactly. We're saying a CEO needs to read 52 books a year. That's that much knowledge you need in order for you to run the company. And you're sitting with people who read nothing. And you call yourself CEOs. But we want to build this great business. With what knowledge? If you need to read 52 books, where are you getting the knowledge if you are not reading those books? So this is one year that is going to change your life. We have had people in the previous years and we said, how many books have you read? Ah, come read nothing. <laughs> okay, so what are you reading? Ah, YouTube. Okay. So YouTube is readable. Even if you can watch YouTube videos, there's a science behind reading. I'm glad you've got a deputy, I mean, deputy dean here from the university uh, business school, an academic who can also attest and tell you the benefits of being an academic, the benefits of reading, what it does to the brain and all that. So, but anyways, we'll get to that. So I'm just going to highlight these things. I think these are the tool. This is just to get you ready before we go through the day before you start the process so that you know exactly what we are here to do. So everything I'm going to give you in sixes, but I'm just going to give you the highlights. Okay, now, um, ah, this disclaimer, I think, let's pass it. I've already broken any, some of them anyways. So now let me just give you the, the, let's start here with the tool up here before we even get into the business, before you even get into you. You need in anything that you do, for example, if you get teams to go and play in the field, there's a plan. That's why this coach will sit there. You see they've got a plan, how they've done it. If the plan doesn't go accordingly, now they must change the plan. He'll be talking with the assistant coach over there and stuff. So there's a certain plan that you need to follow. And now from experience, let me just share this with you. Um, now I decided, let me share my thinking with you before I give you the facts now and depress you a bit and then uplift you and then get off this podium, all right. First of all, very important we've spoken about this, guys. It's very important that whatever you do, your mindset, I'll explain it right now. You talk about motivation. What about motivation? I, always, I often say when I put this and people who know me, who hear me speak or do whatever, they will always laugh and say, motivation, serious. So you are misleading us. I always say motivation is for amateurs. Why is it for amateurs? I'm not motivated today. I'm not waking up because I'm not motivated. I'm not motivated, dear A. Look here, achievers follow what you call discipline. And what is discipline? You do what is right. When, it need to, when it's needed to be done, whether you feel like it or not, it doesn't matter. You get up and you do it. But now I'll explain what motivation is. You need a map. You can't just drive and go where you don't know, where you don't have a map, okay? 
Now, you need what you call, I wrote it manifest, but manifestation, which I will explain. You need that thing that people call root of all evil, but you know what? For you to actually, even to go to the doctor when you are sick, you need money to pay, but you call it root of all evil. How interesting. Last but not least, monitoring. Let's quickly, let me briefly explain. By mindset, what do we mean? Anything that you're going to do like your business right now, get into a business and then it's always like, hey, if this thing doesn't work out, uh, what will I do next? Okay. Why is that? This is your choice. This is your life. This is your, basically, if you want to get into business and be a business person, you need to have a vision. You need to see exactly, you know what? At this time, after so many years, this is how it's going to look like when it's all said and done. So you need to have a vision of what you're doing. It's not about hustlership, you know, mouth to mouth, month to month, you know, uh, getting the money and then you buy yourself some. You, that's exactly what happens, you know. So this is not why you are in here. And now, which is something, a lot of things that you need to correct as well in terms of your mindset are the belief systems. Thinking these things of money is all a root of all evil. I, I will hammer on this one. I apologize to all the pastors in the house. I am a Christian and I go to church. But that's not what even the Bible is saying. It says the love of money, right? But that's a, if there's any pastor in here, he will come up and then maybe I'll, yeah, you know, explain more whether it's concerned. That's a collaboration. The only thing I'm dealing with here is that is that mindset of you, the bottom line of your business is the root of all evil. All right, so this is what you call, yeah. Now, motivation, what I'm referring to here is that, why are you doing what you're doing? Let me tell you something. People don't care how much you know until they know how much you care, okay? And that's why you're in business. Now, you need to have a very strong why for you to do this, to build a business over the years, to go through whatever that, go, that, that goes through so that, remember when the tough gets going, you need that strong why. You need to remember why you started. Whatever that, that why are you doing what you're doing is the main thing that will actually pull you even when you don't feel like it. When it's raining and you think like, ah, nah, I'm staying in. But if you remember your why, that's what will pull you. And just to make an example, how many of our parents who were mere domestic workers their biggest why they went to work, why they would go to work even when they are sick. The biggest reasons why, Mr. Felix, I saw that you have a crush, you probably you were playing soccer and they kicked you. Now you are here with your crush and you are working very hard. Instead of you sitting at home and saying, you know what, I'll go when I'm fine. You still go despite the fact that you know what, you are not 100% fit even to, to go to work. Is that strong why that you need? It gets you out no matter what. So that's very important. So you need to know your why you are doing what you're doing. Now, by the map, we, you know, it's interesting that people talk about business plan. That's the best thing they know, business plan. But you don't have a personal development plan. Here's another word that, or another thing that you need to know. Your business will only grow to the level of your incompetence. Anything you don't know about that, there's no way your business will go. So if you know up to here, your business will go up to there. So that great business you want to build, the reason why it's not great and it's not getting anywhere is because of your level of incompetence. That is why you need to be developing yourself all the time, reading all the time, getting to know, you know about your industry all the time, every evolution. Interest in two things. Entrepreneurs who says, I, nah, me and technology. <laughs> you and technology, we're in a technology era now. I've walked into an internet shop with a guy sitting there looking very bitter. And I asked him, I said, sir, are you okay? And he said, can I help you? I said, no, it's fine, you can help me, but are you okay? He said, no, you can see I'm not fine. I said, what's wrong? He says, no, business is not going well. I said, why? He's got an internet shop. He says, everything now is taking everything away. Now people are not even printing, so how are we supposed to survive? How are you gonna answer that guy? The only way to suppose to survive, you need to level up. That's what you need to do. You need to see where the world is right now. You are way behind, that's why you are depressed. So if you're gonna stay there, you may as well go six feet down under because if you don't any stress, the stress will take you. So one of the ways that you're going to start what you are starting and don't let it kill you is that you are going to have a good self uh, personal development plan. And it's all about knowing Self-mastery, master yourself, master your business, and master others. Others, your team, your employees. 
or the people that you'll be working with. All right. Oh, before even that, the last one is this one where you always shock people. Now, as a coach, when we sit and we look at exactly what you have, who of you has got a death plan here? Exactly. Now, the question I'll ask you, you are sitting here, you've got 200,000 in your bank account. You are married. Your wife doesn't know your PIN number or even your internet banking. You die today. And then after dying, somewhere along the line you had problems and your policies bounced. Now they go and claim from the policy and they say, you know what, this person defaulted. Now because of that, there are issues and all this. Now there's no money to bury you. You've got 200,000 in your bank account. The next thing, you've already informed the bank uh, that um, my husband died, right? What's the first thing that the bank does? Freeze your accounts. And that money that is in there, when will it be released? Now, three months later, your estate is red and people are sitting there, they are giving things. And then, hey, while you are busy sitting there, here comes three, four other children and say, hey, that's our father contesting the bill. Now, it takes so long for you to, what, what's happening? Now, the person who had money at the time, that's why sometimes you go to the funerals and say, oh, okay, I know probably, I think from our, let me put it this way, uh, Mr. Barnard, and um, let me see, let me just make sure, I think it's Mr. Mr. Nell, right? I'll tell you one thing here, and my black people here know it very well. You see, black people have funeral covers, 14 of them, but no life cover. So this is not a white issue, it's a black issue if we have to put it that way. So now, with this death plan, now when you go, when somebody dies, this is where you must see the ladies. If you want to see them looking the best, go to a funeral. That Friday, they will skip work, some of them, to go and make sure the outfit is on point and the hair is on point. Funerals are show-offs. Now, when you are dead, your funeral, as well, people look at it. Like, okay, so we thought he had money. Anyways, I'm sure you're sitting there and thinking, okay, <laughs> yeah. But anyway, with what I'm saying, what I'm saying is that one of the plans that you even need to have is your death plan when you are dead. Your death plan, now it shocks people. We've got a template and we'll teach you how to have a death plan so that even in your, in your death or while you are dead, you know, you still go as honorable as you lived. That's, those are things you will learn. And most of the people you'll meet, 99.9%, they wouldn't know about this. They won't have that template, I promise you. Anyway, so one of the things to manifest now, all these visions that you have with the motivation, with your plans, you need to have what you call, you need to take action. Now, what you are going to teach you on how to take action and remain disciplined, there are things, DD, we call it default diary. Um, I was showing uh, Mr. Silepe there next to me, saying, you know what, every Monday from January until December, eight till nine, we actually, as franchise owners, we are in a meeting, it's a default. I'm not even supposed to schedule anything where that is concerned. As a business owner, there are things you're not supposed to schedule. Like in, on your default diary, your sleep. Now, if you think of people who are successful, your billionaires and stuff, if you ask them how did one of the things that they do, they'll tell you about their seven, eight hours sleep. I was checking this post on Facebook and people said, no, they have money, they can sleep. We don't, you know. But it's part of the things, if you want to live longer, if you want to live healthier, it's interesting how lack of sleep can even damage your brain and all these other effects that are there. So it needs to be part of your default uh, diary or default activities that you do. We talk about your action plan that you'll follow. And most importantly, you know your IVVMs, which I will uh, talk about right now, where you idealize and you visualize, you verbalize and manifest things. It's interesting how people say, I'm realistic by realistic meaning that they're negative. You can achieve this, I ah, know, 
I can't. What did Henry Ford say? Whether you think you can or you can't, you are right anyway. And you must see the people who speak this. Now, the people, the same people, then they go and idolize the people who follow the signs of, you know what? You need to idealize it. You need to visualize it and see it. Have a vision board. You need to verbalize it. And that's how you can manifest it. They follow the same people, admire them, but they do things otherwise. Robert Kiyosaki said, a lot of people claim to trust God, but their actions show that they don't. So you need to have a formula as well for your head. Exactly, formula. How do you follow these things? Well, we follow science. And it so happens Bible is scientific, you know. Um, but anyways, I'm not going to go deep into that. Now, very important, the root of all evil to other people, very important. This is your bottom line in business. If you are going to business, how are you going to pay people if you call the resource to pay people root of all evil? How are you going to buy stuff from the suppliers? How are, you going to, how are you going to address all these things? But very important here, as entrepreneurs, you need to know your numbers. And this is exactly what you are going to deal with and show you how to go about it, knowing your numbers. Last but not least, anything that is not measured is not done, basically. You know how many people go around and tell you, I'm the best. How do, you, how do you know you're the best? What's the criteria that you've used? So now, yes, you know, I like it. You know, uh, you guys can do that. You know, when the pastor speaks and somebody just gets up and says, yes, pastor. So yeah, if he talks to you, please, by all means, you can do that. <laughs> so now, talking about, we talk about monitoring and evaluation. What MTN does as well is that after three years, they're going to come after you. They're going to check your businesses something called monitoring and evaluation. Even in your businesses, you need to test and measure things you do. I, I'm not getting customers, so why? How about I'm marketing? Okay, so how are you testing and measuring that this marketing is working? Huh? That's where the problem lies. That's where the problem lies. So if you can test and measure, this is where you'll know what went wrong, what to fix, how to do, I mean, how to get, do it better next time what to get rid of and what to increase and all that. Now, these are the things that will actually uh, sort of teach you. Okay, those are the first six things that I'd like to discuss with you. Now, I'm almost coming uh, you know, to the end, but before it even gets that, and then I show you exactly where the business is concerned, let me just take you through this. Remember now where we are sitting, where we at. The unemployment, right? Um, where we at, uh, the unemployment stats, that's why you guys started your businesses, because a lot of you, there's some of you said we started because I didn't have a job, I was offloaded, you know. So the youth unemployment, majority of you here are youth, if not all of you, but I think you are all. If the youth, uh, the ANC Youth League uh, president is over 40, then you guys are still youth, you know. Um, so anyways, now here's just something that I wanna say. One of the things that pains me, we are sitting where 46% of our population is on grants. You know, the 350 has become a trending thing. When I get my money, Lord, help me not to change and treat people otherwise. And they are talking about the 350 rent of the grant that is being given. And where does this grant come from? You know, I can go through all this thing. Where does it come from? How many taxpayers do we have in South Africa who are working? Okay. And these are merely people, I don't know, I don't even want to go through this. I'm sure you guys, you know this, that you can check. Literally, if in the population of over 60 million, how many people are looking after the population through their tax money? And on top of that, first of all, it goes into people's pockets before it even does what it's supposed to do. Now, let's mind our business. Where our business is concerned is that if you look at it, if there are over 2.5 million businesses that are registered and we have over 7 million people that are unemployed, that's why Action Coach, we came up with this, um, we have a campaign, each one higher one. Imagine how we can actually get rid of this unemployment. Instead of funding startups that don't know what they are doing, going to each and every business, fund that business to hire one person. Look what's going to, what's the turnaround that we'll get into this. Now, this is the problem when entrepreneurship or decisions are made by people who are not entrepreneurs. What you call ethical dilemma. That's why you guys, you need to fight in your spaces. You need to take up those spaces, not just ladies, even though it was said by Miss Universe, you know. Not just ladies, we need to take up the spaces. 
That's why I myself, I made sure I'm in those organizations that are controlling the business sector of South Africa. As hard as it is, as long as it takes you guys, when you know, get in there. Because we've got this ethical dilemma that we are seeing. That's why we are struggling to get where you should be getting, we should have been uh, right now. All right. So, anyways, with that being said, um, it's fine. Let me not address too much of the stats. Now, let me talk about you before I close with your business. You're an entrepreneur. You started this. Why? You saw the lifestyle. Said, you know what? I want to be like that. So I'm going to start a business today. You know? What does that business come with, first of all? Okay, and then after that, you call yourself an entrepreneur. But before I say that, you know when they say, let's take a moment of silence. I think, let's do that. Help me go through this before I give you a quick reality check. You saw a lifestyle, and that's what you wanted. Somebody wrote this, and I thought, this is so heartbreaking if you think of it as an entrepreneur. They say the only part they told us about entrepreneurship was that we'd be our own bosses. That's what we want. We don't want to be controlled. We don't want to take orders from anybody. But what they didn't tell us, they never told us that we'd fail many times before we succeed. They never told us that we'd work five times more than our employees and not get anything sometimes. As a business owner, you first pay the people you brought into the business before you pay yourself. They never told us that this would cripple our credit scores, that we'll be in debt and owe a lot of people money. How many of you have lost people? Even I myself, I've written people out of my life. I'm an entrepreneur, I've got an order coming, help me with 130,000, they pay me and then I pay you. Then people run away with money, now that's something else. But besides that, sometimes you get that and then you get the money, they borrow you the money, then what happens? You don't get paid, but you've done the job. And this is where now you start owing people money and it goes that way. No one said about this sleepless nights trying to figure out a way forward. That's exactly what you go through. No one told us about the stress and anxiety. No one told us that this will cause conflict between us and between us and relatives and uh, I mean and family members. Isn't it true? No one told us that would be jokes to society especially when we start changing from one business to another. Think about it. You leave there, eh, he said he's going to be successful. Look at him, now it has failed, now you're a joke. No one told us that sometimes you'll go six months without income, whether you are not being paid for the job that you've done already, or you are going through that struggle, you don't even know what to do. Living in the age and surviving through borrowing money from different people. No one told us that our doors would be shut down due to failure to pay off. They can't get to work. No one told us that we'd be hobos at some point. Even one of our greatest entrepreneurs that we know, Vuzi Tembeko, I will tell you, I mean, he had to, he, did, he didn't have a home. And the, his home was his car, and the bank was looking after the car. That's why he was living in the basement, so they don't find the car. He was a real hobo at the time, if you think of it. You know, some of us, even I myself, have been a hobo. I used to live in Joburg. Hey, I shop at Joes. Then I became a hobo. I came back. I went to welcome to my mother's house. But I knew I'd get myself out of the situation. So I know what they, what they are talking about here. No one told us that our wives and girlfriends would leave us because they will not understand our journey. What are you saying? Ah, proposal. You take me to holiday with a proposal while we are looking for a job? Or should I make my voice deeper? It's not just ladies, come on, gents, I, you know? And they tell you, okay, no, when you have the money, then we'll talk. And by that time, you're in love with this person, you've already made a commitment. They love you, but they will leave you because you don't have the resource. You are not Minister of Finance. You, are, you don't even have a car, Minister of Transport. You are useless, basically. During that process, when you are trying to get up there, no one told us that we'll have to be more than patient, even more than patient at the hospital. That would make so many mistakes and end up losing a lot of money. And that is why you are here. This is us saving you from many mistakes that you will continue making. 
or that we could potentially make. That at some point, we'd have to risk our lives in order to move forward. We had to figure this all out by ourselves. Many gave up on the journey. Some died on the journey. But some of us are going through so many pain, we decided that we are going to succeed or die trying. That's exactly what I'm talking about. That tenacity. This is your lifestyle. Your life depends on it. You go at it that way and you'll make it. Some of us are never giving up on this matter, no matter what. We are doing it and very aware of the circumstances. It's a win or nothing for us, and it's too late to go back now. You've made the decision. So if you, if you go into a marriage and you have your backups, you know how you'll treat that marriage, right? So now you go into a marriage and say, you know what? So fast, till death do us apart. This is your relationship with the decision that you've made. And when you do it that way, it hits differently, you do it differently, you achieve differently. We are entrepreneurs. Are you guys entrepreneurs? Are you entrepreneurs? Okay. Now, for two minutes, let me bust your bubble. You are not entrepreneurs. You are not entrepreneurs. And I'm going to prove to you now. Mr. Barnard, when you go into... Um, Mr. Slab, when you go into the corporate, or, or you get into a corporate, when you start, you start there. You can start as an intern and go up the ladder and all this and aim to get to that high position, isn't it? Now, our entrepreneurs, they call themselves entrepreneurs and they think, when you think of business, you're an entrepreneur. Now, I'm going to give you that quick reality check so that you know who you are and you work towards becoming an entrepreneur because I am dead sure that if any of you was an entrepreneur, you wouldn't be sitting in here. Sorry. What do I mean? First of all, you want to be an entrepreneur, which is the B. You want to become an entrepreneur. Now you need to do certain things for you to have this entrepreneurship thing or to have what entrepreneurship gives you. If I have to make an example where this is concerned, Oprah, I always ask people, what does Oprah do? Oprah Winfrey. Why is Oprah having everything that she's having? Ah, no, she's doing this business, eh, business there, and she's got this there. She's Oprah. If we have to bring Oprah, when we brought Oprah down, the University of the Free State here in South Africa, why did we, why did we bring her down? Because she's Oprah. So you are working to become an entrepreneur. She's getting paid because she's Oprah Winfrey. Does anyone care to know what Oprah does? You, you, you want to book her and bring her to your event to speak because you want to know what she does? Or you want to bring Oprah? Because she's Oprah. You want to bring Barack Obama because he's Barack Obama. Let's leave Americans alone. You want to bring Patrice Motsepe right now. Why? Just because he's Patrice Motsepe, isn't it? I can go on and on. Now, the process we are in, when you talk about personal development, the doing becomes secondary. Primary is who you become, which is be multiplied by do. You, will, you need to become somebody and do certain things to have what you're going to have. So you're not just going to wake up and have that tender. You've seen what happens to those who wake up. They have not become entrepreneurs. They have not become financially literate. They've become nothing, but they have all this thing that they don't know in front of them they can manage. Have you seen what happens to them? And which is one of the ethical dilemmas that we are having. So anyways, that's exactly uh, what you're talking about. So now, let me, let, me, um, let me upgrade you. If you don't know this one, my entrepreneurs, I'm talking to you now, who call yourself entrepreneurs. Let me tell you why you are not entrepreneurs. There is something called entrepreneurial ladder. It's at the top to be an entrepreneur. Now, you guys, you, are go you will see where you are and do that reality check and start to come up with a new plan to get yourself to the top, which is exactly if you go into a corporate uh, space, if you go into uh, even government, whatever, people work, there's a hierarchy there or hierarchy where people work towards to become somebody at the top, and it takes work. You start as an employee, you work for somebody, and you decide, you know what, I'm sick and tired of working for this, I nearly said idiot, but you know, <laughs> I wanna work for myself. You know, you've learned everything that needs to be done and you think, I know enough. And then, what do you do? You leave. You start what you call self-employment. And what is self-employment? Let me show you what self-employment is. How many of you are sitting here and your business is closed? You had to close the doors of your business? 
Don't be shy. We are going to make sure. Uh, give me those hands, please. Okay, so what does that mean? And you call yourself, you have businesses. You don't have businesses. That's self-employment. It's about you. You do everything. You are the financial manager. You are the secretary. You are the CEO. You are everything. So what does that mean? It means you are not there yet. It's self-employment. That's why you are here. Okay. But is it something bad? No. It's the second stage. Now what you need to do, upgrade to the third stage. Now you've done everything and you now have money and you say you can pay people. You bring in people into the business and say, okay, fine. Uh, let me bring in people who can do what I'm doing. Now you double and triple your problem. If you bring one, it's double, two. You triple your problems by bringing some people in. All the mess you've been making, now other people are coming and they're making it, and you have to deal with that mess. You call, you are this person called a manager. That's why people hate managers. Have you seen successful people who used to be employees? They said, I used to work and I used to have this, to have this manager. You know that biatch? You know, they start, that's how they start. I don't know if you have attended the, the workshops. They said, you know what, I wish they could see me now. You know, that's why managers are, are so bad because all the mess that you've been doing, now you are managing other people, they're giving you the same problems they've been giving you, now you're a manager. That's where you add. How many of you, you get into your business, you work in that business, and the, the, you know what, your daily activity is to run around people. It's to manage the situation is exactly also what our president is doing. He ain't leading us. He's managing the situation, if you think about it. Now, probably one of the people that people will see as the worst president, or two people that people can see as worst presidents, probably maybe President Jacob Zuma. Hey, Mshinoam. I miss Mshola Ziman. And Vladimir Putin. Those are people who can make decisions. Those are leaders, not managers, who react to things, if you think of it. But hey, that's not what this conversation is all about. So after you are in this mess, you decide, no, 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 no. Listen, one of these people have been going through this for 12 months. At least this one who can do better. You start grooming, grasps better, and others listen to this person. They respect him. You can make that person a manager, and then you can now, what, step out as a business owner. You can't step out of your business while you are still self-employed, while you are still a manager. You see, these are, called, you know, pre what, what, what do you call it? Premature. What's the word that follows? Stepping out of your business you know, prematurely. English. Yeah, prematurely. These are some of the things. Now, if you are sitting there and you think that you have flexibility, you have time, and you are not at the level of a business owner yet, you don't have somebody who can actually be you. You've duplicated. You can do what you do even better than you do it when you are not there and still get the results or even more. Then you're still a manager. So you get yourself to that level where you're a business owner. And what is a business is that thing where you own systems and people. They can do things. And this is how you can actually, when you master those two, you can just create more of those. That's how you can become a serial entrepreneur. But you need to master. Not know, master. You need to master people. You need to master the systems and create those. That's when you become a business owner. Now, if you have read the book of Robert Kiyosaki, the, what do you call it, the, the rich dad, poor dad, you know, he talks about the four quadrants. If you look at on the right, there's business, there's investment. So when you start making money, later on when you are, I mean, you are creating your own legacy that in the future, you know what, I want to, you don't want when you retire to go back now and have Sasa as your parent and guardian and 1,800 rand a month, right? So in business, it's nice. You can do more, you can get more, and then you can become an investor. What does that mean with the money that you have now? Your resources, instead of people and systems are working for you in investment, you take that money to go and work for you and make you even more money for that matter. Okay, so that's when you become an investor. Only when you're an investor, what is an entrepreneur? Now, when you're an entrepreneur, you're talking about somebody who has been through though, is not at any stage, has passed all the stages. It's somebody who has got people, has got systems, somebody who has the money, somebody who can innovate, create things and give it to people. Now you don't do it for yourself. It's not self-employment. It's not so that you can employ yourself. You are doing this for others. You can create businesses and let others run with it. What did the Bible say when you have a vision? Write it down and let others run with it, isn't it? It's biblical. 
That's when you're an entrepreneur. You can innovate. When you see there's a problem and this escom and monopoly, you come out there and say, you know what? You are able to innovate and come up with that, you know what? Uh, innovate and make sure that, okay, fine. I will resolve this big problem that is there. You also have the leverage of time. You know, the billionaires think a week where they say they go away for a week or two weeks, where you just go and think. We don't worry if your income is going to be affected or not. That's when an entrepreneur, you can put you know, your thinking cap, you can put all the resources that you have in your head together and come up with something and innovate. That's why your people like your Elon Musk and all that, you know, they're coming up with all these innovations and stuff. That's when you're an entrepreneur. Now, are you an entrepreneur? Not yet. Okay, we'll take you through the journey to go there. Now, Last two minutes, talk about your business. Now, this is you as an entrepreneur. So at least you know exactly where you are at. That's number one. So you know where you are going. So do this and stop lying. Uh, don't lie to yourself. Don't let this be a delusion. Follow a model. Follow a methodology. Follow the steps for you to get from one to ten. Um, no, you can um, come through, say. Okay, so now, the last thing that I just wanna talk to you about, which is now about your business. Now, this one, I'm just going to show you the model. I'm not gonna say much, because that's exactly what you are going to go through. What we are going to teach you to build is that a commercial, profitable enterprise that is going to work without you. Why is it, it needs to have money, it needs to be commercial, it, it needs, you know, it's an enterprise, it works without you, basically. Systems and people, and how are we going to do that? through this step, six-step model that I'm just going to show you, then I'm done. Okay, first of all, we spoke about mastery. You're going to have to master yourself and master that business. This is where you start. And we will take you through things that you actually need to master when you are doing these businesses. You know, things you call your SOPs, your standard operating procedures, all these things that you need to write. That give clarity to anybody who will come into your business. That's where you start as a business owner, if you are setting it up. Okay, you eliminate that chaos. If you master yourself, you master your business. Now, secondly, then you need to get to what we call a niche. You know, your differentiator, your competitive edge, your competitive advantage, whatever that you call it, you need that niche. That's why people get up and they go straight to ShopRite, subconsciously they go buy from ShopRite. They go to Woolworths. They go to all these businesses where it's like, it's at the back of their minds, it's subconscious. Because those businesses have found their niche. Me too businesses. You know, I looked at exactly what, what is happening in the tech uh, space, what people are looking for, or what is happening, what's evolving, what are the high skills that are needed? And then we look at our entrepreneurs, what they're doing. Many of you guys, that's why they are not here. It's me too businesses. Oh, he's doing it, I'm doing it, he's doing it, I'm doing it. You know, you don't get to get, find your own niche. And the people who have niche businesses, trust me, is that thing where, and this is how it works. You know the Pareto rule, 80-20, 20%. 20%, 20% of customers or clients give you 80% of the money. You don't even need so many for that matter. So that's one of the things that you're going to help you. There are methodologies, there are systems, there are templates that you will follow in order to build a niche for your business so that you don't all look the same. Because if you look the same, people, I mean, why must they choose you over others? All right, and the third thing, while that is done, is the third thing we call leverage. Now this is what you call systemizing your business systems. What does systems stand for? It's an acronym for saving yourself, time, energy, and money. After you build in systems and your business is efficient, then we get to the fourth thing that we call team. Let me just highlight something. If you start at the bottom while you are mastering, trying to come up with a niche and systemizing your business, anybody who starts with you there is your business partner, is not your employee. You don't bring in people into a business you can't pay. How do you do that? This is where many people, you recruit too early. When you cannot pay people, you lose talent and they don't come back. The same talent that can actually help you build businesses. Now, only the fourth step, which is what will teach you how to actually build a high-performance team. When you have that team that you have built, uh, I mean, oh, when you have systems and you have money and you, there's no chaos in your business, you can bring in people who can actually use the systems to build your business and the system can govern them to actually, you know, um, get to build your business. Where's the exit point of your business? When you've done that, you've built this team, then you get to that point of synergy where you can actually start having your managers, your business is well all machine. What does that mean? You have duplicated yourself and you have people who can actually do what you do even better than you. That's when you can exit and go play golf. All right. 
Last but not least, we are going to help you build your business to the end goal that I told you about. To that end goal, whether you're going to keep it for passive income and go play golf, but everything else, those five steps are in place, meaning that you will be able to, you know, to take time off, play your golf, but your business can still run and give you passive income. Is that what is there for? No. It's more than that. This is where you can actually take that time when you don't need to utilize it and set up either franchises or build other businesses for that matter or help other business owners. This is where you start living life. This is where you can live your purpose. Because normally our daily jobs, the work for many people is not their purpose. That's why they need to find something outside that. Some of us are very lucky. You do something, I can't find something out of this. The only thing that needs to happen with my team, with my family, I need to be stopped from doing it because I don't find anything else to do outside this. It's like, this is exactly what I'm doing. But for many people, it's not a luxury where that is concerned. So even in your case, if you build that business, you need to escape from it, then that's when only step number six, that will happen. But we'll show you exactly and one of the lessons that you will have um, where that is concerned is that we are going to teach you towards the end, we are going to teach you and show you exactly how should you then prepare that business to be able to sell it, to be able to franchise it, all those things that you actually need to do, even when you go sell it. What do you need to present to, uh, um, to what? Whether the brokers or what do you need to present to the, what do you call it, or to other people who want to buy your business, not just your balance sheet. You need to set it up in a certain way. These are some of the things that you are going to learn throughout this process at the end of the day. So you should live here at least knowing what a finished business is. It will not be finished. There is a deadline to it. There are businesses that we have finished for clients in six months, in 18 months. There's a nice business. I'm sure uh, you know it, uh, Mr. Barnett. It started here in Bloomfontein. It's national now. You know, like your BioLink started. BioLink started as a business. Now it has got franchises across the countries. The owner of BioLink now, you know, um, I want to almost say they are not, you know, they are senior people who now had to learn how Instagram works and they can go live and they can teach people, you know, all the things that young people do. Because there's so much passive income, they are bored now, they need to look after their franchises, they couldn't even run their own. That's exactly what you're talking about by finishing your business. So now you'll have the tools, you can start working towards finishing that business. And when you finish that business, this is when you will impact the economy with your franchises, with those businesses that you can, when you talk about, you know, when you look at your banks, your FNBs, where they've started, put businesses at that level where we can come up with that legacy when you talk about the generational wealth. You know, what do they call it economic, what do they call it radical economic transformation during our time? No toy toy will give you that. No uh, land of expropriation without what, what, what is it, what do you call it? Expropriation of land without compensation will give you that. The only thing that will give you that you build something. You use your, the, the tools, you use the resources, you use the sweat and every resource that God gave you to build that. That's, now we are here. Luckily, we, I think the level field has been, the playing field has been leveled. We have opportunities. We should be able to build these things. Okay? So you have the chance. We cannot still be sitting here and coming and complaining and talking about apartheid. Some of you here were not even born when apartheid was here but you get somebody like Dalim Pofusan. How old is he? Who wrote a book about apartheid? I think the boy has got PhD. I'm sorry to call him a boy. I think he's younger than me, I care. Sizwe, how old is he again? 20 something. 22. He wrote a book about apartheid. And I thought to myself, seriously now, think about it, guys. If this is the kind of society, if this kind of people that we are, Leave in medicine, we have this word, it's not really medical. Excusiates. You find excuses, you plant them in your brain, it becomes your mindset. That's not where we're at. I think we have been freed. I think we have been freed. We have freedom to do what we want to do, to say things that we have to say. So, and do things the way we can do them. Let's use this the right way. And the only thing that can change this is business, but not business, business owners. Now, my last slide, just to take you through. Don't worry, this ones I wasn't even going to address them because this is what you're going to go through. I want to go straight to my last slide and show you exactly 
um, the cycle of business. Okay. Don't worry, you're going to have this. Yeah. Now, last but not least, what's going to happen as owners here, you need to build that team. You need to look after that team. That team will look after your customers. Your customers will look after your business, and your business will look after you. So you don't need to bail out. If you do things the right way, it will get there to look after you. You'll have a big business like MTN that has got team that is looking after their customers. You know, the team is here looking after us, the customers, and the business is looking after the owners, the shareholders, and everyone else for that matter. So that's the circle that we are uh, going through right now. Okay, so ladies and gentlemen, I was actually given an hour. So I've utilized all the hour. And I just like to say, I hope this was not uh, too much for you. I could see, I was looking at you, I could see some of you are still awake. Even the one who, who was sitting like this is like, hey, you know. So I hope you had a reality check. I hope you have an outlook of what's going to happen. But mind you, this is only the coaching. We still have the university. So with all this that we're going to give you, I hope you guys will utilize this opportunity and make use of it. With that being said, I just want to say, EBL team, thank you very much for the hard work that you are doing under your leadership, um, Lesala. So I'm looking forward to working with you guys. We're all looking forward to working with you. So yeah, welcome once more. And uh, may God bless us in this journey. Your life is definitely changing. This is not going to be the same, but it's going to be better than it was when you entered here. And uh, I think Leslie will attest to us where that is concerned because numbers don't lie. With that being said, thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Have a good day. get into the EBL program outline and what you can expect for the year of 2022. I'm sure you guys can't wait. This is what you want to know, what your timetable looks like. So that's what we'll getting, be going into. First, before I get into that, a bit about EBL Institute and who we are. We, uh, we offer credible business education with support and measurable results. That's also our slogan. That's exactly what we offer to our entrepreneurs. So what you'll see also here, how do we do that? How do we give you credible business education or support and measurable results? We offer you credible education through the university. We offer accredited university training with credits, and that's important, with credits. And then we also offer internationally accredited business coaching. That's the support part together with entrepreneurship development and personal development. We also offer leadership and management prog programs that are tailor-made for corporates, that can be tailor-made for government, and also for communities. So that's in a nutshell who EBL Institute is and what we do. Uh, and the programs that we offer. So a little bit about our impact uh, that we've had while running this program or while doing these, offering credible business education of support and measurable results. Our impact from 2014, uh, we've had over 960 graduates who've done the full course, which you are about to go into now, the full program course uh, uh, throughout the country. And then in terms of the short course programs across the country, we have over 3,075 graduates across South Africa. Then through this program, we've created over 7,500 jobs throughout the country. And then we've also secured over 20 million worth of funding and training provided annually since 2014. And then over 4,035 uh, graduates who've, graduated, who've received NQF level five university certificates across the country. So that's the impact that EBL Institute has managed to have throughout the, the country so far. And the team that you'll be working with, you will see throughout the year, there'll be other team members, that's, but this is the pri primarily the team that you'll be working with. You've met our CEO, Dr. Tabo Pizzi. Uh, he is our leader there at, at, at EBL Institute. He's also the action coach who'll be, who you'll be working with, our primary business coach in the program. So that's the man that you work, that's gonna be working with you and training you to build a business as he's also built one himself. Uh, we have a research and content developer, that's Mahauta Malindi right there. So everything in terms of you taking pictures and making you look good, the posters that you'll be getting, weekly uh, communication that you'll be getting from us. She's the lady behind all the writing and the content development at EBL Institute. There at the back, we have Gunolo Morobani. 
She is the communications and student coordinator. She's the one you've been communicating with all the way to make sure that you're seated here with us. And she's your primary contact. So that's the person you wanna impress. If you, if, if you mess up with Bonolo, you're probably not gonna reach to any one of us. So that's our gatekeeper. Make sure that Bonolo is happy and she always has your latest uh, contact information, your email, cell phone number. That's the lady that you'll be communicating with primarily there. And myself, uh, I'm the program manager at EBL Institute. I'll be working with you throughout the program to ensure that you're actually getting the work done. Uh, that's, that's, all, that, that's all it's about, getting the work done. You need to get the work done in order for you to graduate at the end of the, the month or at the end of, of the year. So what can you expect? Our program has three facets. It has three phases. The, uh, the first phase is the accredited university training phase. Uh, we're going to be working with the University of the Free State. Um, then the curriculum is accredited by University of the Free State where once you are done, you're going to get an NQF level five certificate with credits. So for in terms of the content, what, will you, what can you expect? You can expect financial literacy for SMEs. You can expect marketing, business plan and canvas model, skills development program for the fourth industrial revolution. And the objectives of that program or the university training itself is to ensure that you gain knowledge and skills to become a successful entrepreneur because we've, we've actually uh, established that most of you in this room are not entrepreneurs yet. We're still in, in, in self-development. Then we want you to implement project-based learning with heavy influence on the STEM areas. Also, we want you to develop critical thinking so that you can think like a business owner and make decisions like a business owner. And we can you know, cut those mistakes that a lot of entrepreneurs make. Then we want to integrate computing skills such as creating financial statements uh, or spreadsheets. You need to know your numbers. You can't run a business if you don't know your numbers then we want to uh, conduct research for career skills relevance, uh, where we look at technical skills, uh, standards in your industry, um, and also how to develop yourself as an entrepreneur. Then we, it's important that you develop pitch deck presentations so that you can do those elevator pitches. We had some of the elevator pitches this morning and not so many of them were very convincing. I think coach will tell us a lot of them, we wonder, will I buy? I'm not so sure. Uh, because of time, we'll look at it also in the afternoon, whether uh, those, uh, uh, those, those elevator pitches, are they on par or not? We'll look at that. Then we want you to learn design thinking and brainstorming so that you can identify and uh, problems that are worth solving, especially you guys are in the ICT sector. Yeah, you know, ICT is ever evolving. It's ever evolving. So you need to be critically thinking about how can you solve problems in your area? Because that's all it's about. ICT is all about you know, solving problems because we have connectivity problems, communication problems you want to integrate or, or solve from with the solutions that you guys bring. Then the second phase of the program is personal development. We're going to be looking at your disk profile, your personality type. Why are you the way you are? Why do people fight with you? Why do you have clashes? We're going to look at that and a bit of conflict management as well. We're going to look at interpersonal skills and mindset and also creating that vision board. Now, why is that? So that we can Develop your performance because the more you understand yourself as an entrepreneur, the more you can understand your entrepreneurs or your, 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 cust your employees and furthermore your customers and the more you can lead them or create an effective strategy so that you know exactly how to lead your people, right? And then communication management, it's very important. You can't work with a team if you're not able to improve the communication between the two of you or you and your stakeholders. Then the third phase of the program is group coaching, group mentorship and, and business coaching. Uh, there we are, that's where we work with uh, Action Coach Business Coaching. Uh, a few other programs that you'll be doing is Action Club. I'll explain in, the, in a few slides what Action Club is, but the name, uh, the name says it in itself. It's all about taking action. As an entrepreneur, you need to be taking action. What type of action? We'll get into that shortly. The next one, Growth Club. That's where we will be doing 90-day planning sessions where you are, uh, we're looking at you know, the previous 90 days. What have you done? How have you run your business? Then we look into the next 90 days and we help you plan so that you can effectively reach your goals that you've set for your business, right? So that you know exactly where you are on a weekly basis and test and measure to ensure that you're actually reaching your goals. The next part is Mentor Club. This is where you're gonna be working with your coach. Uh, you like being having mentorship sessions with a coach. You get to ask coach about, you know, you've applied some of the systems that you, you've learned throughout the program. Now it's time to come back and meet the coach. You know, that mentor, mentee, relationship, that's, a, that's what that program is about. Then we have business management and strategies masterclasses. These are webinars where we bring you experts from various fields of entrepreneurship 
to come and work with you. I'll explain later on how all of this gels in together to give you the program that we're going to do. Right. Now, a bit about the partners that we work with to give you this program. Uh, we you know you've, you've met EBL Institute and the team. We also work with Huri Sandipio. Huri Sandipio is Amada, our, our holdings company that's holding all the companies throughout, uh, including uh, yeah, EBL Institute, Sage, and other companies. We have MTN uh, South Africa. This is the main funder in the program. We also have the University of the Free State Business School who will be giving university training. We work with Action Coach Business Coaching. They are also going to be the ones that will be giving you the business coaching. We then have a, f a few other stakeholders that we work with. We work with uh, D uh, EDTEA uh, or ETIA in KZN. We work with the STIA here in the Free State, uh, DUT and InnoBiz. You'll be meeting most of these stakeholders later on as you go into the program and you'll get to understand how they, what, or what, what part do they play in the program. We have NYDA and CEDA as well and other partners that we'll be introducing to you later on closer to your graduation. Now, Code said you need to build a business. Uh, he said the definition of a successful business. Who remembers what is the definition of a successful business? By show of hands, who can remember? Who was listening? You need to build successful businesses. We don't even remember the definition anymore. Who remembers? Someone, they're hungry. <laughs> we'll get their food. We'll get their food. So Code said a successful business is a commercial, profitable enterprise that works without you. Now, the question is, how do we get it to work without you? This is how. Now, this is the structure of the program under EBL. On a monthly basis, this is what your structure is going to look like. The first week, you're going to go into uh, the university. You're going to do university training. This is where we do the theory with the university lecture. We're going to sit down, and you're going to have to do that, right? Now, the second week, you've done the, the theory. Now we get to practical. We get into business coaching. We're going to go and do an action club session where you're going to have your business coach who's going to show you the practical, um, you know, practically what do you need to go and do. Then you're going to have to go and do that for a week. Then you come back. You've applied everything that you need to do. Next, the third week, we're going to bring in an, ex an expert, an industry expert, our expert advice where somebody has done this or somebody who specializes in this. They're going to be giving you a lecture. So you have theory, you have practical, and now you get an expert so that throughout the entire month, we will be focusing on one topic. So for example, if the topic is marketing, that's what we're doing. We're bringing in theory on marketing. We're giving you the business coaching and practical advice in terms of uh, marketing in that month, and then we bring you a, a marketing expert to help you fully understand all the facets or all the aspects of marketing in itself. Then the final one is where mental club. Now you come back, you've applied everything, you've exercised. If you are supposed to build a marketing plan, you've done so. Now you're coming back, you're saying, okay, coach, I did one, two, three, four, five. Now uh, these are the challenges that I have. Now you bring those challenges to the coach and you have that group session uh, with the coach. So this will happen according to the coach. On a weekly basis, you'll be required to send assessments. These assessments will let us know in which groups should we put you for that mentor club. All of that will be communicated to you closer to the time. Then quarterly, on a quarterly basis, this means every three months we're going to have a growth club. You'll remember I said a growth club is a 90-day planning workshop where we look at the 90 days uh, so far, how you've been running your business, how is your marketing, how is your finances, what are the, the mistakes that you've been making? Have you reached the goals that you set? Then we look at the next 90 days and we look at, uh, we plan as to uh, the goal. We, 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 we do goal setting and then we plan how are you going to do or to reach those goals in the next 90 days. So as coach would say, business is a 90 day game. And also what generally in South Africa or across the world, what they say, how do you eat an elephant? Piece by piece or one bit at a time. So that's the whole model there, and that's what we're going to do. So uh, a bit about, more about Action Club. As you can see, the uh, primary coaching session. I'm sure you have a few questions there. Let me show you a little bit about what that is. So Action Club is a program that builds a strong foundation for business around all key fundamentals of business. And it's also a program set of seven sessions that are going to run on a monthly basis uh, that cover all key components of business You know, you know, know, from so that you can get that uh, successful business that coach spoke about from getting you from the level of mastery, which is the first step all the way to results so that you can either sell your business, uh, give it offer or sell it or uh, maybe franchise it or even leave it out for passive income. So now what you're going to learn throughout the program under action club is 
It's gonna help you achieve uh, more by improving your priority setting and time management skills. It's also gonna help you define your USP so that you can stand ahead of your competitors and you know, and turn it into a powerful competitive weapon. If you have a powerful USP and you can communicate it clearly to your clients, then it's most likely that your clients are going to buy from you and not your competitors. Action Club is tailored to help you achieve that. Then we dramatically increase your lead generation and conversion skills. This looks like your marketing. How does your marketing look? If you have a thousand clients and you only have 10, if you have a, a thousand leads and you only have, have 10 clients, that means there's something wrong with your conversion. That's what we'll be looking at as well, improving that sales so that you can convert more clients or more leads into clients. That's also another thing that we'll be looking at. We also help you develop loyal, profitable customers that keep coming back. How do we do that? Through a retention plan. Coach will be guiding you through all that, uh, how to create that throughout the program. Then we also differentiate between cash flow and profit margin so that you can increase the profit in your business. We help you hire, develop, and retain the best people because, you know, as Coach said, your people take care of your business and the business takes care, takes care of you, right? So if you remember that circle, that's how, then you'll see how important it is to develop and hire uh, your team because they're the ones that are effectively running the operations in your team and working with your customers, right? Then lastly, it ha under Action Club, we're going to help you create systems that allow the business to run without you. That successful business that's, uh, that is going to run without you. So another aspect of the program is the business management and strategies uh, master classes. So what can you expect from these master classes? As I said, it's gonna be experts from various uh, fields uh, of entrepreneurship, from marketing to sales and other aspects. So this is just to show you a little bit about the speakers that we had last year. For example, you see in April, we had uh, Harry Webley Cook, he is the master licensee, the head of Action Coach in Southern Africa. So he's the one who was doing goal setting with us there. Then we had Precious Mbulani in May, who's also an expert in marketing and finances. We had uh, Shemaine Brits, who is over, who has two, over 25 years experience in marketing. We had Marlene Powell. She, is, she has over 15 years experience as an Action Coach. And guess what? Your coach, Action Coach Savo Pizzi, as he entered uh, Action Coach, that's his coach there. So the coach of the coach. That's the person that we worked with there. So you can just imagine, and you've seen the quality of the number one ranked action coach in, South, in Africa at the moment. Now imagine you'll be dealing with somebody that's coaching them. And another thing, they're ranking number three or four according to those rankings there. So they're a very powerful coach, very experienced. You learn a lot from them. And then in August, it was Women's Month, so we brought in uh, a couple of uh, female experts from across uh, various fields of entrepreneurship. You remember Poppy Act was a big thing. We looked at Poppy Act, we looked at marketing, we looked at finance and corporate investment. Uh, you'll see that's what we had there in August and September. We had leadership. This is another coach of the coach that we worked with, uh, Mr. Diedrich van Niekerk. He's quite an experienced action coach himself. He's won a lot of awards and he was the speaker that we had there in September last year. And in October, we looked at SMME finance uh, and financial um, you know, submissions to ensure that your business is always, you know, SARS is your friend. You don't want SARS as your enemy. You want to make sure that SARS is happy. Otherwise, it's going to come and take a chunk of your money if you don't pay. Then the last one there, we had a, a two final, uh, final webinars by uh, Uvusi Tembekwayo together with Action Coach Tabupiti in terms of how can you shell investors and get funding from entrepreneurs or from uh, various investors, right? So that's what you can expect this year. Uh, we're not promising you that we're gonna have the same speakers, but I'm saying that's the caliber of speakers that we have in the business management and strategies. We might even have even better ones, right? So how are we going to communicate with you throughout the program? These three channels are what we're going to use. We're going to use email. We'll be sending you formal emails, uh, which uh, to communicate exactly what you need to do on a weekly basis. You'll also be getting weekly updates. I'll show you in the next slide of what a weekly update looks like. So this is a, an update of what you can expect in the next week and what happened that week. So it's gonna be generally around 15 minutes for you to read. It's not gonna be an essay where you need to read there for an hour and a half. It's gonna be quickly just an update of what you can expect. Please do read this. This is also a primary um, method where we'll be using to communicate any notifications of what you need to know throughout the program. Then the second channel is that we're gonna be using WhatsApp. We'll be texting you individually, but we'll also be putting you in WhatsApp groups according to your specific provinces. 
so that we can communicate with you. Those will also be your notification ports. That's where you'll be able to ask us questions. Any challenges that you have will be a phone call away or a WhatsApp away. Then the final method is your telephone. So please ensure that we have your right email address. We have your right WhatsApp number. I know some of you have a different WhatsApp number and a different calling number. So make sure that we have both of them. And also please be aware if MTN has opportunities for you, they also need to have proper or uh, uh, latest date or latest uh, contact information so that they can get to you and give you opportunities. So throughout the program, you might also get uh, access to tenders from MTN. So please make sure that we always have the latest communication. If you buy a new phone, tell us. Don't buy a new phone and you have a, a, a new number and we don't know and we need to struggle. Where do we find Mamela? Where do we find Lebohang? Where do we find Lagat? We need to know that. So please ensure that we always know. So what, this is what the weekly update looks like. You remember I told you on a weekly basis you're going to get a weekly update. So we're going to have Action Tuesdays and Big Feedback Fridays. I'll explain them shortly what they are, but this is what you can expect. So if, you, if that week on Thursday you don't get a weekly update, go check your spam. Go check your promotions folder. There has to be an update. And if there's not, let us know. I didn't receive my update. So you'll always be getting this on a weekly basis. Now, a, bit, a few assessments uh, that we need. As I said, you remember I said uh, credible business education with support and measurable results. So we need to measure the results that you give or that you receive in your business. So how do we do that? Through the following assessments. The first assessment, which is your homework as you leave this room is the business background questionnaire. So this is a five page document that tells me how you are currently running your business as you're sitting here. It's gonna look at your marketing, it's gonna look at your, your leadership or you or yourself as an entrepreneur. It's gonna look at your sales and numbers. Please fill this in as accurately as possible. If, if you don't have uh, the right numbers, you can project, but please project as accurately as possible. We go through that also in the afternoon so that I'm going to show you exactly how it works, but basically, it's a document that tells me how you're currently running your business. It tells me how you're dealing with your team, how you're doing your marketing, your sales, and all aspects of your business. The second assessment that you're going to be getting is this one is going to come monthly. It's your scorecard. On a monthly basis, I'm going to be sending you a scorecard that you need to fill in and tell me what your numbers look like. So I'm going to be asking for your leads. I'm going to be asking for your sales, how many customers you have. So if you're not recording those at the moment, please ensure that you start recording them from today so that you know exactly on a weekly basis, on a daily basis, how many people are coming through my company and how many are going out. Then we're going to be having homework from the New Venture Creation. New Venture Creation is the university accredited program or the training that you're gonna be doing. It's once a month, you'll be getting homework. This is, got, this is the only homework that you'll be getting on a Monday. Everything else is coming, uh, we need it in on Friday. So Action Tuesday, class. Feedback Friday, homework, or home fun. Then Monday, homework from university, right? So Action Tuesday, Feedback Friday, Monday, university homework, right? We'll get into that now, I'll show you your full program outline and see what it's gonna look like. So uh, on a weekly basis, I'm the number four, I'm gonna be asking you to submit a weekly focus sheet. This one takes 15 minutes, 15 minutes maximum. You can even fill it in in five minutes. So this is just quickly, you'll report to me on a weekly basis, why, how are you running your business? So from today, I expect you to have five goals that you set for yourself in a business. Now, at, uh, at, at the beginning of the week, you're gonna write those goals for me. Then you're, you're gonna send that weekly update or that weekly focus sheet to me. On Friday, you're gonna send it back to me. You're gonna fill in those goals. You're gonna tell me, I achieved this goal. I didn't achieve this goal. If you didn't achieve it, you must tell me why didn't you achieve it. You're not just gonna say, I didn't achieve it and then leave it blank. You are reporting. I need to measure the results that you, you that, uh, or the work that you're doing. So you're gonna report to me and say, this is the reason I couldn't do that. You're gonna tell me a bit about your business, about your morale, how you're feeling. You'll see the weekly focus sheet will be sent to you. It's a one page. Then we have weekly uh, coaching home fun. This will be uh, according to the coach, according to the topic that you have. He'll also be sending you homework that you're gonna be that you're gonna need to do. We call it home fun because it's fun. You're building business. I get it. And you, the, the more your business is, is, is uh, the more your business is well built, the more it takes care of you. So that should be fun, shouldn't it? So doing the work should be fun. So that's why it's home fun. You're just doing it at home. Then the leverage game, uh, we're going to ask you again, this is your second contact session. You're gonna have three contact sessions throughout the year. This is the first one. The second one is your leverage games, where we're gonna ask you again to come through and we're gonna play leverage. I'll show you shortly what uh, leverage, what you can expect from it. But it's a business simulator game 
where you get to build business on a board and you get to learn business principles. And some of the mistakes that you're currently making your business, in your business, you're going to see them there and see how you can fix them or how you can improve your marketing, your sales. It's another assessment that we'll be looking into. And the last one is your 90-day plan. Remember, the Growth Club, every 90 days, we need to develop a 90-day plan where you're planning for the next 90 days and reviewing what you did for the previous 90 days. So let's get into it. All right, Coach. Yes, I think before you pass, just a quick one. And yes, this question as well. I think while our stakeholders are still in the house, some of the interviewers may be sitting here and saying, when am I running my business? What, what are these homeboys about? You know, pretend you want it. I just wanted to add that this whole, everything we're talking about, is about your business, nothing outside. If you're talking about marketing, it's your business. So there's no reason, you don't do anything outside. It's not an extra. A seaside has one. Well. Mm-hmm. It's a best, everything is about the old business. Just remember that. So there's no reason for you not to do it. Because mm-hmm. we've had people before <laughs> drop out of the program. We don't get uh, uh, dropouts anyways. But we have one or two who drop out of the program. Because now they talk about they come back. And they say, can we please have a private session? Can we have, what's the problem? It was marketing. Why did you drop out the, the program? Because that's what we're teaching. Those guys being there. Because they have this idea thinking that maybe it's something else. It's not something else. It's about your business. Marketing is your marketing plan. You just taught principles to apply instantly right there. So I thought I should just stress this one so that you don't panic about this whole thing. Yes. Okay. Sorry, honorable speaker. Thank you, Coach. Thank you, Coach, for that. All right. So as we said, you need to give you 100% when we will give you 100%. And homework is only once a week, as Coach said. It's going to be uh, on Fridays. And things like your leverage business game, we're going to do that once. Your 90-day plan, every, every quarter. So it's not going to be every day you need to submit this. And scorecard, only monthly. I'll also show you how what it looks like now as we get into your schedule so that you don't panic. All right. So in terms of your schedule, your roadmap to success, let's look. What does it look like? So what you can expect now in March, on the 29th of March, we're going to have the official uh, orientation and official program launch. This is where we're going to bring all of you across the five provinces on Zoom. We're going to connect together, and you're going to meet the rest of the, co- uh, of, of, the, of the cohorts throughout the country. So this is going to be a program where you'll also uh, outline what you can expect from the University of the, Bus- of, of, of the Free State Business School. The team will be there to show you exactly uh, what's expected there, how, how to use Blackboard, the learning management system that we'll be using there, and others. So that's the, so. please mark it in your diary. It's going to be from 9 up until 11 on the 29th of March. So that's the standard time for our classes, 9 to 11. We, we, we at all, Every time our classes are going to be on Tuesday, so it doesn't change. So this means we understand that you have meetings, you have to run your business, so that's why we want to keep it constant, consistent, and it's at the same time each and every week. So only classes only once a week, on Tuesdays, half past nine to 11. All that information will be sent to you as well in your study guide. Once the home fund has been submitted to us, you'll receive your study guide as closer to the time as well and communication about the 29th. Then in April, oh, sorry, uh, on, in, in March, on Friday, what your, your deadline, your first homework there, you remember I said the BBQ is your first homework as you leave. It's due on the 29th of March. That's when we need you to send your business background questionnaire. So it's important that on the 29th it's sent. The reason for the business background questionnaire is it gives coach, it gives us an idea of where you are. Remember, coaching is different from curricula. We need to coach you on performance. We need to coach you specifically for your business. So we need to understand exactly where is your business at the moment. And that's required before your first class. So your first class is going to be in April. You will see the theme there at the top is goal setting and mental health. That's what we will be focused on in April. So the first week, you'll remember I said you're going to have, if you look under Action Tuesday, that's where the classes are. On the 5th, 5th of April is the University uh, Session 1, New Venture Creation Session 1. That's the theory we'll be doing with goal setting and mental health. Then in week two, we're going to have a uh, Action Club session where you'll have a session with the coach, a business coaching session uh, on, business, on, on goal setting and mental health. Then on the 19th of April, we'll have a masterclass on the same topic, goal setting and mental health. 
Then week four, on the 26th of April, it's going to be in a mental club. So the theory on the 5th, on the 12th, we do the practical where you do the coaching uh, or, and you get strategies and you know how to implement everything that you've learned with the coach. Then you hear from an expert. Then now you apply everything that you need to apply. Then we bring you up back for a session with the coach. Does that make sense? It's pretty straightforward. So this is what you can expect. That structure that we spoke about, that's the structure on a monthly basis. And you'll see, if you look under Monday here, on the 4th of April, it's your, you need to be uh, onboarded on, on Blackboard. This is going to be explained on the 29th of March exactly how does that go. So you'll have from the 29th of March to the 4th of April to get registered on Blackboard. That's the learning management system that we'll be using for the University of the, business school, uh, of, of the, University of the Free State Business School, the sessions. Then your first homework from the university training is going to be on the 11th of April. That's the Monday following. So from Tuesday all the way up until Monday, that's the homework that you'll have there that you need to do. Now, Feedback Friday. We, as remember, I said Action Tuesday, Feedback Friday. So feed, every Friday, you're going to be sending us feedback. The first thing that you need to do on the, every month, at the end of the month, you submit a scorecard. So on the 1st of April, you're going to be submitting a scorecard to let us know what your numbers look like. Remember I said from today, I need you to be tracking your leads, be tracking your, your sales, your marketing, how many people you're getting. That's, your, that's going to be your first scorecard. This one is for practice so that you know exactly what we want. So after that, you're going to tailor make your scorecard for your business to include those. Then from April, I expect your scorecard to be a polished one so that you have everything that we need. So this one is for practice so that you get into uh, how to submit a scorecard. Then the one that matters most is going to be from April onwards. Does that make sense? So we get you into doing it right. Then on a weekly basis, remember I said you're going to do a weekly focus sheet on the 8th, the 15th, and the 20th too. That's when I need you to submit a weekly focus sheet. It's a one page that tells me exactly how you're running your business. It tells me about those five goals that we spoke about. So you send it to me at the beginning of the week. All you write is first five goals, send it to me. On Friday, you report to me how many of those goals did you achieve. It's a very fairly easy process. If there's any challenges, the team will always be there to help you and assist you so that you are you fully understand how it works. You'll also have access to my number and email address. And email me if there's any issue. Right. Let's look at March. In March, the same structure. Week one, university training. Uh, week two, we have action club. Week three, we have our master class with the, with, with the industry expert. And week four, we have our mentor club session. And the theme for April is or May is marketing. We're going to be looking at marketing. So now we've done your goal setting. We've done your mental health. Now we do live marketing. We want you to attract those leads. That's the theme for the month. And you'll see under Feedback Friday, the structure is exactly the same. At the end of the month, you submit your scorecard. And the week where you submit your scorecard, you're not required to submit your weekly focus sheet. So this means we because we understand that it's a lot of work that you need to do in running your business. And also that month-end prep, where you're preparing, you need to pay people, you need to pay that. So there's one assessment that you need to submit for, for our side. So in June, our theme is sales. Uh, you'll see new venture creation week one, action club week two, master club week three, week four. Now that's different. Look at that. On the 29th of March, is now it's been three months since you've been in the program. That's where we do the growth club, the 90-day planning session. Right? So this is where it's going to be a session on Zoom. We're going to sit together. We're going to look at everything that you've been doing and then create that killer plan for you to kill your sales and marketing for the next 90 days. Right? Then the structure for the week feedback Fridays remains the same. In July, it's going to be the theme is finance. Week one, university. Week two, action club. Week three, master class. Week four, we do the mentor club. Now take note under Feedback Friday, on the 1st of July, what do we need? Your scorecard. Every month end, your scorecard is required. But now you have an additional, uh, additional submission, which is your 90-day plan. So we created a 90-day plan during our, 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 our Action Tuesday. Now you need to submit that 90-day plan for us to review so that after 90 days, we have it. We can then review and say, in contrast, what did you do? You, you might just change it and say, ah, I achieved everything, but you didn't. So... We need you to send it to us, and also the coach needs to assess that so that uh, he knows exactly what's happening in your business. Then in August, 
We have Women's Month. You will notice on the 9th of August, it's, it's Women's Day, so there's no session for you there. So this means you only have session, two sessions for August. It's going to be the new venture creation. Then you don't have an action class for that week. Then you have a master class on the 16th of August. But take note of what's different. Uh, the last one there, uh, from the 22nd to the 3rd of September, that's where we'll be doing our leverage business games. This is that assessment that I spoke about. So you'll see, because we are going in five different provinces, what you'll notice is there are different dates there. So the EBL team will communicate to you in time to say where should you or where or on which day should you be here for your session between the 22nd of August to the 3rd of September. So it can be any one of those days. It's a full day program just like today where we sit down and do our business leverage game. So what, you, what, can, what can you expect for this assessment? Uh, it's a contact session just like this one, your second contact session. So these are some of the pictures that we had through the leverage business game that we had last year. You will see, you'll be seated around the table with your fellow entrepreneurs. You'll have a business uh, leverage board game on the table where you get to start and run a business while sitting there. Now you may ask yourself, how do I, how, how does that work? Come and we'll show you exactly how that works. And this is a very powerful uh, business game. You can, you can think of people like Robert Kiyosaki. They have a, a board game like this. Now this one is tailor made for entrepreneurs as well where you get to build your business, looking at all the numbers. As Coach explained, you know, where we work with the six steps, we have five ways and we have four ways. That's where we're going to be looking at your people, your team. We're going to look and be looking at your systems. We're going to be looking at your numbers, your sales. This whole game has all of that incorporated in there. This, this is a, 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 a day of learning. And also maybe when Leslie comes up, he can also share some of his experience as well with business leverage game. Right. Now let's get into the next month in September. We, the theme will be systems, where we're looking at systems in your business. The same structure under Action Tuesday, we have the University of the, of the, of, of the Free State Business School a session there. We have Action Club. Then we have a master class on systems. And then it's been three months already. Can you believe it? We have 90-day planning session where we now look, need to look at your numbers, how you, what you've been doing for the previous 90 days and also plan for the next 90. Then under Feedback Friday, that month you need to submit your scorecard as well as your 90-day plan. Then in October, we're going into leadership and team where we look at you as a leader and also how to help you build a team that can run your business without you. So that's the theme there for October. The rest of the structure remains the same. And then in November, we have the theme of November is graduation. You'll have your final session at the University of the Free State Business School, session eight there on the 1st of November. You'll see your submission or your final submission for UFS is due on the 7th of November. And should you want extra credit, that's going to be uh, due on the 14th of November there. Then on the 8th of November, you'll have a master class on funding. And then we'll have a final closing session from the University of the Free State Business School, as well as from EBL, where we make arrangements for the graduation that's coming up. And then on the 4th of November, you'll be required to submit a nomination form where you'll be nominating yourself for the Business Excellence Awards for 2022. We'll show you a little bit about what that looks like. And then from the 21st to the 25th, we're going to have a graduation conference, not a graduation day, a graduation conference week, where it's going to be from the 1st of uh, November up until the 25th of November. And then it's a graduation and business excellence awards. What can you expect there? This is what you can expect. You can expect some uh, from last year. You can expect some volleyball and morning exercise at the beach. This is what happened in 2021. Every morning you'll be required to go to the beach, do some volleyball, do some morning exercises. As I said, there's always fun involved. So that's going to be in there. We have some personal development where we look at you and your business personality types. This day is a transformation day. We're going to turn your world upside down. It's going to be amazing. We'll show you exactly. I'm not going to say too much. You will see during the graduation. Then your graduation ceremony, you're going to wear your graduation regalia. You will see our sessions are not your regular university sessions. We have our international sessions there that you'll be wearing at the graduation as you graduate from the EBL program. And then finally, and last but not least, we have our Business Excellence Awards. This is where we'll be crowning some of the work that you guys have been doing, your increase, your growth in sales, marketing, all the wins that you've had. This is the day where we celebrate that. And you'll see you're going to be getting a tailor-made EBL Oscar Award there at the end of the year that you can go put 
in your office, right? And then, obviously, there needs to be a grand winner. Last year, the stakes were 100,000 here, 100,000 rent. I've been told that this year, the stakes are even higher. So throughout the program, you'll know exactly what some one of you is going to be getting. It's going to be an entrepreneur of the year that's going to be walking away with money that's injected into their business. So there's a lot to look forward to in the EBL program for 2022. But in order for you to get that, you need to put in the work. You need to put in that work to build that business. Now, what you need to do now is first and foremost, download the Zoom app. That's primarily where we'll be having our sessions. And then book the time from 9 to 11 on the 29th of March for our official opening session. And then you need to save our information so that you know how to get a hold of us. Bonolo's email, info at ebilinstitute.com. That's the number you, where you can get a hold of us. And also connect with us on social media. After days such as these, we post some of your pictures on social media so that we can share. Uh, so go and like there on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Connect with us there. And very important, please ensure that Bonolo has your correct WhatsApp number because as you exit today, we're going to put you in WhatsApp groups so that you can communicate with you as quickly and efficiently as possible. The next thing that you need to do is ensure that we have the following documents. As you know, this was required. So please make sure that you send us your company documents, ID, metric certificates, and highest qualification. I think my laptop just died. I will put in my, my charger quickly. <laughs> so, and then the last homework or the last two slides or uh, that, that we're going to show there is your BBQ and your important information form. You'll see on the BBQ, I'm going to explain it. We'll fill that together after a lunch, as I explained, where we excuse our distinguished guest. We'll stay with our EBL 2022 cohort and we'll do those, that paperwork together. We'll look at your BBQs, uh, some contract signing. You need to sign a contract so that we're in agreement that you're going to put your 100% and we're going to give you 100%. Then the important information form, this is where you're going to be filling in important information about yourself. You'll be asking, you'll see there, we'll be asking you about your spouse, we'll be asking you about your birthday, we'll be asking you about such things. Those are some personal information that we need to know about you because we need to know who you are in order to be working with you. We're going to walk this journey together up until November, so we need to know a bit about you. And I promise we're not going to post any of that on social media or anywhere. It's purely for us. All right, so we're not going to share your, your, your fiancé, any of that information. So that's what you can expect in the EBL program for 2022. Any questions? Okay, let's take one question from Harold. Uh, maybe just a bit of a boring question, rather. Um, I, I quickly browsed the documents. Um, is the calendar also in here? Or do we have access to it? The calendar is going to be sent to you once I receive my, my first homework uh, closer to the 29th. It's going to be in your study guide. Yes. All right. The rest of you, if you don't have questions, please note them down. After lunch, we'll get time to, to discuss. So time for last one last question. Kamela? Uh, I'm not sure. Can you please just elaborate uh, for the next uh, credit? On the extra credit. So for extra credit, your lecturer is going to tell you exactly what you need to do for extra credit. So there'll be uh, assessments. He's also going to explain the type of assessments that he wants to get from you. That's also going to be explained on the 29th of March. Uh, so he's, he'll tell you primarily you need to submit one, two, three, but he's going to be sending you two other three things that you need to do extra apart from the primary what's required. If you do that, that will also uh, be you know counted as extra credit. Yeah, so that's all of that is going to be outlined for you also by your lecturer as you start with your session on the 29th. Coach, last question. Okay. Yeah, I want to know that like, the, the, the school, is it going to be physical or Zoom context? Everything is virtual. We only have three contact sessions. This is your first contact session. Your second contact session is going to be the business leverage game. We'll be asking you to come back. And your final contact session is going to be your graduation. Everything else is virtual. Thank you very much, Mr. Program Director. Like uh, Dabu also did, he said uh, at the beginning, all protocol observed and to all our distinguished guests, our sponsor in MTN, uh, our partners, and then of course, um, the participants in this program are heartily welcome. Um, it's a pleasure for the UFS Business School to be involved in initiatives like this and like I said Tabu in, in the event that we had on Friday evening our mission is to teach people how to fish instead of just feeding them fish um, 
you all know the old saying, if you give a man a fish, you feed him for a day. And if you teach him how to fish, then you feed him for a lifetime. And in essence, that's the philosophy, that's the point of departure of everything that we do at the business school. Um, we are not in the game of issuing certificates for people to put on their CVs and against their walls. We are changing people's lives, and therefore our slogan is to be worth more. And, and, and that is our wish for you as participants on a program like this, to walk away a changed person, firstly, with a changed business, and ultimately to be worth more. Um, Liz Ola asked me to just say a couple of words, and, and I know you've already been overwhelmed by so, uh, so much information this morning, but just to say a couple of words in terms of where the university play in the entrepreneurship space, and specifically the business school. Firstly, Tabu, I would like to say that I sat there and I thought to myself, I'm, I'm the worst student in the room. Because before the program director, uh, you know, addressed the issue, I already went out to take the important call. I, I fielded a couple of emails and WhatsApps underneath the table. So program director, apologies for that. Uh, I should know better. But the third, the third point that, that also came up, came up is that um, now, Tabu, I'm like you. There's something that I wanted to say, but now it got lost. Okay, I'll, I'll get to it later. Oh, yes, like any good student, if, if a question is being asked, um, the standard answer is, I wanted to say what he said. So, so if, you're third, if you're the third speaker of the morning, then all the good stuff has been taken. <laughs> so so I've, I'm definitely not going to repeat what, what Tabu and, and Lasala has already addressed. Um, but, but just to come back, you know, as an as a education institution, a higher learning institution, our, the, the space that we occupy is the knowledge space. Um, we're built on research. Um, and by doing that, we uncover what works best in a specific context. We also network with local and international partners to achieve just that. And ultimately that knowledge that are being created needs to be passed on to the students of our institution. And that's what we do. But we also, um, in terms of, of, of the segments that we serve in the entrepreneurship space, we also, just like you with your business model um, and the journey that you're gonna take to understanding what your value proposition is and which specific market segments you serve, we also operate in a similar way with a specific business model. And firstly, the obvious one is we have our graduate students. And as universities, we are, uh, you know, accused, and the point, the finger is being pointed at us, that we are creating employees, we are creating job seekers, which should not be the case. And I have to say I'm very proud of the initiatives that our university has taken and is currently running to make sure that we educate people with a growth mindset, to educate them that they will not be qualified to look for a job, but they'll be qualified to employ themselves firstly, and then later on employ others. So right through all the different uh, degrees and programs that we offer is, 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 is the notion, and it's been integrated slowly but surely right from the first year, is, is what can I actually go and do with this knowledge in, apart from looking for work? So that's, those are the graduate students, and we, we also participate in, in national um, entrepreneurship competitions, and we create those platforms for our graduate students. Then secondly, we are also in the business of so-called technology transfer. 
In other words, in, 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 in the academic space, while people are researching, they, they discover unique things that can be patented and commercialized. But being an academic and being an entrepreneur are two different things, distinctly different things. And the clever people that, that, can, that has the ability through their research to isolate that, that thing that can solve a problem, whether it's economically or social or health-wise or education-wise, they're not necessarily the people that can commercialize it, convert it into a value proposition that can be taken to market and leveraged. So, so we also play in that space. And, and there's some good developments there. And then obviously as a business school through our uh, full suite of, of, of programs, you know, we have a higher certificate in management development. We have a baccalaureus in management and leadership, a postgraduate in business administration, an MBA, a PhD. Throughout those programs, we integrate modules of uh, entrepreneurship, innovation, new venture creation, etc. Um, but it doesn't necessarily form the core of what we do because our purpose is management and leadership development. So I have always had this thing in me that I I have a, a passion for for fueling. A little late. <laughs> I have, a, I have a passion for the man on the street. The, the man, and when I say the man, pardon, the, the person on the street. Um, the, the, that person that didn't have the privilege to complete matric and go to a university. Um, that person that if you put him through a typical entrepreneurship program, with a major outcome of how to write a business plan, then they're typically overwhelmed with the amount of theory and models that need to be understood and covered. So, so over the past six or seven years, we've been refining a program that we ultimately launched about four years ago that is aimed at the person that didn't go to university that doesn't have a BCom underbuilt and wants to go into, into, into entrepreneurship. And it's, 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 it's twofold. The one is it's about um, being practical. In other words, everything, just like Tabu has explained this morning, everything that you learn you must be able to do. That's the asset test. And the second thing, it must be digestible. In other words, it must not be that complex that that keeps you more busy than your own business success. Because then we're also missing the point. Because between all the partners on this program, we have one objective, and that is to put sustainable, scalable businesses out there at the end of a program like this. And, and that is what you'll be going through. We will, through... Uh, through your facilitator and Mr. Vanner Schmidt, you'll be unpacking your own business model and testing it right from the value proposition, your market segments, your channels to market, what the relationships, you know, what infrastructure resources, what partnerships do you require in that model to make it work? So that you can ultimately step outside that model and say, as a system, that model is now functioning and it's profitable. So, um, to add on to, to what Tabu said, but without going into too much detail, the program is being delivered on, on our Blackboard Learner Management System. Um, we have created so-called learning journeys. In other words, for every week, there's a piece of work that you will engage in at your own pace and your own time in relation to your own business model as you unpack it, as you test it. And then on a monthly basis, like the program director said, you have a virtual contact session with Mr. Schmidt um, 
to sort of just solidify your understanding and also to create that, but so what? You know, ask those difficult questions from the facilitator. And, 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 and like I always said, and I said it on Friday evening as well, Tabu, the peer learning opportunity and the collective knowledge in a network of, entrep of entrepreneurs like this is amazing. And, and, and Leslie can attest to that, how much he learn, learned last year from just engaging with the other entrepreneurs, how they solve problems that is similar to his. So they all along sit with a solution, but just from the mere fact that they're now networking and, 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 and building a relationship, he benefits and he piggybacks you know, on that knowledge. So from my side, enjoy this journey. I look forward to seeing you in Durban at the end of the year, at the end of this program, and where we have the opportunity to celebrate you. Um, it's, it's, it's an amazing journey. It's an amazing privilege that you have uh, to go on this. Make use. The theoretical underpinnings is, is, it is critical to understanding the success of your business, to understanding marketing, understanding sales, understanding your numbers. Make use of the coaching that, that goes with this program. Because the practical way the, so, so in Afrikaans say, what the tacky the tear tref. Eh? That is where the practice starts to make sense. Make use of those coaching opportunities. If there's one shortfall in probably 80% of your businesses that is here, is the ability to track and keep proper record and report on your business. Make use from, a, from, 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 from the coaching side of this program. Get into that habit. Get into that discipline. Um, that's where you position yourself. A lot of the times, through just getting that part right, you put yourself in a position to leverage your business, get finance to grow it to the next level. Um, yeah, and then obviously... This is a personal development journey as much as it is a business development journey. So enjoy that part as well. Thank you so much. Thank you, Tabu. Good morning. Is it still morning? Yes, it's still morning. Good morning. Uh, my name is Lisimula Silepe. Uh, like Lesal has already mentioned, I'm the senior specialist uh, within the foundation. So I'll just give you a quick uh, overview of what the foundation does and MTN as a whole. Um, but I think Lesala has set the tone, so I'll, I'll take it from where Lesala <coughs> has pitched uh, the whole event today. I see that you keep showing your... Uh, your your marriage uh, fought. <laughs> so so I don't know what's happening here. <laughs> Should I be worried and maybe put up my photo? But at the same time, if I if I go deep, I think he's reminding me that we are we are here almost to set vows, make vows to each other. We are setting the tone for the journey ahead and um, make a vow and a commitment to each other. So I'm also here to share our vows and commitment as MTN, particularly the foundation. Uh, just a quick overview. Uh, foundation is a CSI business unit within MTN. Uh, what I mean by that, we are responsible for corporate social investment initiatives on behalf of MTN South Africa. Uh, in a nutshell, Every time you buy uh, data, you buy uh, phones, every time you use MTN, your money, uh, profit after tax, 1% of that is given to us as a foundation to give back to the community. So the foundation is the heart, the consciousness of MTN as a business. Uh, we are conscious that we are operating in a market or in a country that has a lot of social ills. So it cannot be that uh, after making so much money, we do not contribute to the same market that we are operating within. A brief overview of MTN. 
MTN is present in over 20 countries across Africa and in the Middle East. Of all those uh, operations that we have, 15 of them have foundations as well. So the work that we are doing here within South Africa, uh, every footprint where MTN is across Africa and the Middle East, uh, our colleagues in those areas of the world are also making a, a difference in the spaces that they are, they are operating. But to bring it home, uh, the MTNSA Foundation was launched in 2001. Uh, Utata Mandela was even there at the inauguration of the foundation. Our focus areas are in uh, national priority areas, youth and women, health, and, and health, yeah. Okay, I'll move on to the next slide. So MTN as a group uh, has recently launched um, a new strategy, call it uh, the Ambition Digital Strategy 2025. So we've committed to, so the group, at a group level, uh, the group has uh, adopted a digital transformation strategy for the entire Africa. As a foundation, we've also committed to align to this um, strategy using the core business, which is ICT. The reason for this is because our core business is ICT. So the way we can help as a business or make an impact, a meaningful impact within the communities is to leverage on our core business, which is ICT. The foundation, we have uh, three program pillars, namely the national priority areas that I spoke about, Yellow Hope and Youth and Women Empowerment Programs. I'll briefly talk about uh, the national priority areas we focus within education and arts and culture. We have a Yellow Hope program. Uh, that's where we encourage all employees uh, to also give back and participate uh, uh, in any issues that uh, we, we identify that tie together with the national priority areas. And also we have the youth and women portfolio, which is where most of mm -hmm the initiatives that we do are centered around entrepreneurship and the reason we are here today. So I'll speak about the youth and women programs. Um, in this area, we, we, like I said, entrepreneurship is the key, is the key element that we, we've identified as a foundation to help emancipate and ensure that the youth and women are economic, economically active within society. So we use entrepreneurship as the tool. But more so, because we're an ICT company, the common thread in all the initiatives that we do here are centered around uh, information, communication, and technology. So just to give you an overview, what we do, we have programs that we run nationally in schools, high schools. So we have an implementation partner called SAGE, in fact, Tabo is a partner and an implementation partner in that area. He runs that program as well. So here it's just to introduce entrepreneurship to learners, teenagers, while they're still in school, just to ignite that entrepreneurial mindset. Then we have another program that we run nationally again. It's in universities. Uh, we have a partner here which is called Inectus. In a nutshell, what we do here, again, is we expose them to the principles of entrepreneurship, but uh, we run hackathons. So what we do, we, 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 we challenge students nationally, come up with innovative solutions within education, uh, arts and culture, no, education, agriculture, and health. Then once they've identified any issues within those areas, we help them step by step to come up with uh, innovative web or software-based solutions that can be commercialized and scaled out. Then lastly, uh, we support the growth of small businesses, which is why we are here today. I think if you can see in the slide there, I mentioned 100 uh, SMMEs in our slide. Lesala has been talking about uh, 50 SMMEs. So we have two implementation partners. One is uh, HDH, which is Tabo and the team. And then the other partner is DDH, which is Datacom Development Hubs. 
So we support 100 SMMEs throughout the country, 50 of them. We classify them as inland SMMEs. So it's uh, SMMEs from Gauteng, from um, Pumalanga, Limpopo, Northwest. Then we have the coastal SMMEs, which is where you fall in, uh, Northern Cape, Western Cape, Eastern Cape. Uh, then we also have Free State by virtue of HDH coming from this province. The common thing, the common thread that we talk about every time we implement is the utilization of ICTs. So it's no coincidence that all the SMMEs in the space, I think uh, for my colleagues um, who are joining us for the first time today, you'll realize that as they were doing the, their elevator pitch, all of them are in the ICT space. So this is a captured market that we want to support. They have to be within the ICT space. Um, in our few years of implementation with Tabo, we've been implementing the program from 2014. We used to open it up to any SMME. So it, it, you didn't have to come from an ICT background or sector. But since the implementation of purely focusing on ICT SMMEs, we've realized that uh, it's a white and male dominated space. So we've challenged our implementation partners to say that we need to change that complexion. Our support as, as MTN coming in to support small businesses have to be black owned, have to be youth led or a special focus on youth led and definitely women owned businesses. So that's a challenge that we've put to Tavo and the team. That that's what we need to uh, realize and change within the space. Uh, lastly, in closing, the program will focus mainly, or our strategic objective is to help SMMEs within the areas of access. We are trying to promote access for you, access to markets, access to skills, access to technology, and I'm happy our colleagues are here again because I know as MTN we have a lot of services and products that we can offer tailored for SMMEs. So I'm sure that as we interact throughout the year, we'll definitely uh, make sure that you have access to those uh, offerings that we have as a business. Then in parting to you, I'm not in business. Uh, you are the experts, Botawa are the experts, Bolisala. But I think in my short life, I've learned that uh, if you are to achieve any type of success, you need to move beyond your comfort zone. So I believe that today you have all definitely moved outside of your comfort zone. I think we've seen how much homework you guys will be busy with. So you'll def you've definitely put yourself in a position of, of pressure, which is good. It builds character. So I wish you all the best on behalf of MTN. Uh, hopefully, we'll see you on the 20th, the week of the graduation conference. Uh, I wish to see all of you. And I personally believe I'll be singing that uh, I'm chilling with the, what is it, the big boys and the big girls. Thanks a lot. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Program Director, um, our stakeholders, colleagues, distinguished guests. You know, it's a bit risky when you've got medical practitioners in the room. Um, I was put under very strict instruction that I need to use that little crutch there in order to balance, but then I thought I'll be taking a risk if I come and stand on this podium, because you know how human nature is. You tend to focus on the things that you should not be focusing on. So if I was standing here with a crutch, all the attention would have been on the little green stick that I have. However, I think it's um, very important just latching onto the tone that you've already said in the Telesala of how important this occasion and this partnership is. Often, you know, as businesses, we, we, we are 
bombarded with target achievements. We are bombarded with wanting to grow our areas of expertise. And not often do we take a step back and realize that the only way to attain that success and to reach those goals comes with hard work. I was very humbled when you showed the hierarchy. And, um, you know, one of the things that you showed there was you, you need to first get to a management level before you get to entrepreneurship. And as managers, and I'm saying this to my colleagues, <laughs> who unfortunately report to me, and I think they'll hold me to this. As managers, we tend to forget that, that you first need to, to manage your environment. You first need to create a conducive environment in order to lay that foundation of success before you can reach to the very top of the hierarchy where you start really celebrating the, the outcomes and the results. So as MTN Business, as a business unit, we, 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 we've been playing in this business space for quite some time. And I think our colleagues, or I'd like to call them friends and enemies in the same sentence, the so-called red company, they are the ones that possibly have made the most noise about what they offer to businesses and what they offer to entrepreneurs. You hear about VC business, you hear about the SMME campaigns, et cetera, et cetera. But I think if I were to ask by show of hands, very few of you here would be aware that MTN has also got such a vertical within our existence. And in the last three years, I'm proud to say that it is a deliberate decision that we have taken that each and every touch point that we come into contact with either SMMEs, small or large enterprise, even public sector to that matter, we will ensure that people know about empty and business. My colleague, Dr. Lesemula, spoke about our ambition 2025. And colleagues, this ambition is underpinned by two things and two things that are very key. That is to digitally transform Africa, and secondly, and most importantly, to ensure that these parities within FinTech that we are experiencing in Africa are narrowed. There's no use in making a whole lot of money and making your company successful and at Lane Dorpis was Katu of Taung of Maskin Pampirstat. And your businesses and your services are needed in Accra, Ghana. And yet there are no platforms for you to be able to transact. There are no platforms for you to be able to get those, I nearly said some dollars, to be able to get those Nairas being transacted and consumed in our economy. And that is one of our ambition, to ensure that Africa, when it comes to fintech and digital transformation, the parities are as narrow as possible. And within our basket of products, and this is by no means a, a sales pitch program director, but within our, 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 our basket of products, as empty and business, we have got these solutions. And maybe to the colleagues that are here and the entrepreneurs, I implore you that you reach out to both Brian, Simam, and later on you'll be joined by the other colleagues from our office. Exchange contact details. Because as you journey into this journey, we want to ensure that the basics I mean, Natalia Sala asked about your BBQ, right? I hope one of the questions in the BBQ is how technologically or digitally ready is your business? Gebruik jy nog steeds die 199 phone met 9 of 12 knoppies, groen en rooi, with a little screen? Or are you using a smartphone? 
are using a smartphone where you can go and download certain apps that speak to the type of business that you are in. Now, those are the basic foundations that you need to have in your armory and in your arsenal before you can ensure that your company is successful. We've got those within our MTN business basket. Bringing it closer to home, I think what's often said is you find such platforms, you know, people attend other business seminars, breakfasts, et cetera, et cetera. We get this wealth of knowledge in the six, eight hours that we spend together. And then we never hear of the entrepreneurs after that. And we, I'm referring to telcos or even financial sectors that kind of want to play in this development space. What I'm imploring you is reach out to us. We've got offices both here in Bloemfontein as well as in Kimberley. Um, in our audience. Reach out to us because that's exactly where we want to be joined by the hip with you. You know, Dr. Pizzi said something very <clears throat> profound and said, at the end of the three years, we possibly gonna do a dipstick and check, is this relationship worth continuing, et cetera, et cetera. We should not even be doing those dipsticks because we know that each and every entrepreneur that's here is gonna be constantly at our office, constantly by our side. When we, we, when we partner with the likes of Destia, which is what we're doing, and we, we go out into programs of township and SMME development, we should not be telling our testimonies, but we should be having Jere and Cole telling her story. We should be having IT prolonged telling his story. That's how we know that we are definitely moving forward. It's not about the amount of money as MTN that we put into it, but most certainly the level of impact that we see being carried out there. So program director, without making it a langdradacher speech, I need to really ask that each and every one of you guys here realize it's an old cliche, but it, it's a principle that I think applies in, in everyday life. They always say that success is only in the dictionary that you're gonna find it before work. And I think Dr. Peter alluded to that. They always say if you want fitness and big muscles and stamina high, you don't go to the gym only once. The most recent one that I heard was if you want spiritual and Christian type of fitness, you don't only go for a workout on a Sunday. It's exactly the same with business. Do the hard grind. And like you say, Dr. Pizzi, chill with the, chill with the big boys. Thank you very much. Um, it's Nomi Donaldson from the Department of Economic Development, Tourism and Environmental Affairs from the Youth Economic Empowerment Directorate. I'm the Acting Director for Youth Economic Empowerment. Uh, mine is to thank you guys for your participation and your interest in the program, but moreover for your passion in the ICT space. Um, technology has changed and it's moving over the years and the need for youth and youth to be empowered in such a space is very critical. For us as a department it is important that we find ourselves partnering in such uh, programs and partnerships such as the one that we have with EBL and MTN so that we are able to penetrate the space of technology uh, for the youth. I would like to congratulate all those who were interviewed and those who were selected for the program and ask and wish uh, and hope that from today 
as you get inducted onto the program that your cap for determination, your cap for hard work, your cap for um, courage because in this program you're going to need a lot of time, you're going to need to take time out of your businesses, you're going to need to take time out of your families to focus and pay attention to making it to the end of the program. This program is going to give you so much to take home at the end of it all. Um, mine as a representative of the department is to say, don't give up. As you start today, tell yourself that this is doable. You will be able to make changes along the way. You will grow, you will cry, you will be angry, you will have problems and challenges, but never to give up throughout the duration of the program. We are here to support you guys, and we're going to ask you um, to be patient and to really, really put a lot of effort into making this work. Thank you so much for joining us and coming through and also showing that you have an interest in the program by applying. We really appreciate it and we will be with you and we'll hold your hand right through towards the end. We're hoping that all of you will be part of the graduation and we will be with you guys even on that day. Thank you so much and I'm wishing you all the best to our partners. Uh, the DUT, um, EBL, and um, MTN. Thank you so much for a beautiful program for our young people. And we hope that this year is going to be another successful one as we did last year. And hoping that we will grow this um, even more um, at a later stage. Thank you so, so much. Um, much appreciated. Thank you. that this program had, not just in their businesses, but even in their personal uh, lives, because uh, I don't know what you do with the persons involved. I remember there's a guy, um, the guy with the, with the, he's always, always wearing a hat. He's always, no, no, he's always wearing a hat. Salah will know. <laughs> Salah. Uh, I can't remember the guy's name, man, but when we first met the guy last year, early last year, the guy couldn't even talk because he's too used to spending time in his laptop and working in his laptop. You know, you IT people, you spend hours and hours on your laptop. But, you know, I was amazed when he shared his, testi his testimony on the program um, that apart from the business aspect of things, the technical skills of things, but he feels that he's personally empowered himself. So the exercises, the creative thinking that you guys will come up um, are out of the program heavy. So just get ready and uh, be patient with the process. Uh, the teams are here, EBL is here, MTN is here, DUT we here. So when we come in as DUT, EBL is going to work with you with the University of Free State. By the time we finish this year, we have a certificate as well from EWS DUT. So by the time you guys finish, you'll have three certificates. You'll have the EBL certificate, you'll have the University of Free State certificate, plus you'll have the DUT certificate. I was checking with the four. Oh yes, the action coach certificate. You know guys, it's so difficult to get this certificate. There's one time where I was looking for, uh, I did some program uh, years ago and um, there was a position at work, an opportunity, not a position, but they needed someone who's been at least exposed uh, to what I did. But I forgot to take my, my certificate because I was away. I was out of the country then. So now I'm calling them, sending an email to these people. I don't have the details and I lost the opportunity. Some opportunities get unlocked because where have you been? What have you been exposed to? What have you started? Even if it's a short course, and program so you just put that in your profile and boom a five million red project because you've been associated with um, uh, 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 institutions like these ones so I want to say congratulations to you I'm not alone I'm with my team here Ulinda uh, which I want to introduce because she'll be communicating with you a lot guys if you can come Linda and uh, with him oh, 
He's not just a photographer, but he's also running a business. He works with us at the center, but also he's running a business successfully. I have Linda come, Linda, also, please. Because uh, Linda will be communicating more uh, with you guys. Last year, I know Dr. Peter Lane communicating with you again. But this year, it's Linda and I will be interacting with the teams. And also, the program for this year is going to be for the technical skills. It's going to be stru structured or developed very early because the team is still included as part of um, the selection criteria, and he has already indicated uh, the skills that are needed uh, to the team. So it's going to be a nice journey uh, when it comes. So you're going to do the mentorship, do the training, uh, with um, uh, the coaching with Action Coach, EBL, uh, business uh, side of things. Uh, and then with us, we'll be covering the gaps, closing the gaps on the technical skills. Because sometimes we get passionate about what we do and, um, and not focus so much. Especially I, I, when I interacted with the group, I realized that there are some self-taught uh, people. The IT, mostly, most of them are self-taught. So we'll be closing those gaps, taking you back to class with the gurus of the tech sector and closing those technical uh, skills gap uh, with you. Uh, but from my side, I just want to say thank you so much. And thank you to EBL, thank you to our partners, um, MTN, Action Coach, um, University of Freestyle, MTI in the Accenture, our, our KZN partner who made it possible for you guys to be part of uh, this session and uh, this program. So by the time this 12 months finishes, you'll be somewhere else you never thought you'd be. Um, yeah, so there's quite a number of things also that I'm not going to share now because, yeah, I don't want to share things prematurely. But there's an international partner as well also coming in and to, to join into the program and for you guys in case of that. So, um, congratulations. already mentioned my name uh, thank you um, thank you the team to invite me back uh, I'm gonna just share just a little bit um, what been happening uh, since I started the program when I joined the program I think I only have three three people the technician that are there working for me and I think I was still manager there by showing that now um it's business owner and investor i think i'm there now <clears throat> thank you um okay first when you start this program you need to tell yourself to say it, i'm in 100 percent in not 50 percent or 20 percent because it's gonna teach you how to learn about your business the business that you are running you will learn more by this program because with me when i attend this program that's when i noticed that i'm learning about my business and i'm understanding it to see it it's about what um secondly um you need to be obsessed with your business like you need to have a positive mind like when he talk about uh, the root of the evil is money, I know to me it's opposite. Like I'm those people who said money loves me, I attract money. So you need to be positive about your business. You need to set the standard high. That's what you will make you get there and have fun while you are doing it. That's what I was doing. For me to be here and to get those hours, I think I got four hours or five. It was because I was enjoying what I was doing. The only thing that I did not concentrate on it was the studies, the assignments. But yeah, you need to concentrate that too to get everything. Because with me, I focus more on business to say, okay, I want to see my business here. Like now, I mentioned I had three. I have, I think I have 12 technicians now around. <laughs> Yeah.
because of this program, I don't have to be there to run my business. It's running itself. So I learn, I learn a lot. <clears throat> it's helped me a lot. Uh, I don't want to lie, it helped me a lot. I've been doing business since when I was young, but now, you know, you just need, you don't, you must not tell yourself to say, you know, you don't know. You need someone to give you that just little bit push. This program, it helped me to do that in my business. I'm still growing. I was just sharing with uh, Dr. Dion, he left. Um, because of the network of this program, in Devon, they invited me to come and do the engineering harbor for them, the university. So you are in for good things. That's all that I can tell you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Just a question from my side. What about your numbers? Did your numbers improve? Uh, my numbers, they, they improve. Uh, like, if, obviously, if I have to employ more people, they have increased. I would say if I was doing 20%, they have improved to 70%. That's how they improve. <laughs> because you know, the first day it helped me to do pitching. Uh, you know, like, you know how we run our business there in CAS, you know, as black people, you just say, ah, you know, just call him. But now you get to learn how to pitch. That's how the program helped me. You get to learn how to go to the client and say, I'm doing one, two, three, four. So it's become easy for you to sell your business. Now you understand it. So the program helped a lot. Yes. Yes, okay, I didn't want to mention the numbers today. <laughs> okay, um, I think last year when they do the, the accountant did, I think it was 16 million that we, it was our revenue. <laughs> okay, before it used to be, I think it was 350,000, like, Yes, um, that was um, per month. I used to do three hundred thousand, but now per month, it is like I think it. Yeah, so I didn't want to mention the numbers. Okay, others they are asking themselves, what is he doing? Okay, we service the ATMs. We update the software for the ATMs. We, yeah, so. <laughs> <laughs> you know, identify those opportunities. You remember lockdown when people were crying in Islam, mm -hmm. not just lockdown. You remember what happened in KZN? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. What happened? Yeah. Last week. Yeah. The looting is done. Yeah. Guess what? When other people were crying, some people, uh, when you talk about solving problems, yeah. then let's be here all the way from Blue Fountain. I think. A lot of your business group as well came from there, right? Yeah. So when the people went and they destroyed everything, then he got work to actually fix and collect all that. They are oh, wow. So another mess, yes. whatever it was, somebody else's, yeah. you know, which I don't know. Yeah. So he uh, solved their problems. Now the quality is working as well as uh, that. And where? From who? He went to fix that whole case here. Oh, wow. Yes, wow. I know. <laughs> Hey, thank you. <laughs> oh, you want to <laughs> um, I've heard all about the good things. Oh. But I would just want to find out from you is where the challenges as you are in the program. Are there the challenges that you face and how did you overcome them? Okay, uh, challenges they were regarding like um, technician not arriving on time to client. Uh, the delay of the payment because like now I have a client who has paid me from overseas. The, uh, their time is like 90 days. So now you need to pay those people from your own pocket. So those are the challenges, but now it's easy because it's like I already know to say that I'll get my money after 90 days. Yeah. 
Yeah, I can ask. You know. <laughs> what's, your, what's your best advice to, to, to us now who are available? Mm-hmm. What's your best advice to us who, who, who are coming in? My best advice is for you to like take care of your business, concentrate there. Like I already said, you need to give it hundred percent. You need to be obsessed with your business, like to take it there. When you're obsessed, you know to say, you know what, I need to do this to make it. I need to do this because now before it was like I uh, just a baby, you know, three workers is giving me money. I can pay there and there and there. But when you are in this program, that's when you notice to say I can grow this business. So now you need to focus to say, how can I take it to a next level? They used to say, you are sitting there, buy a bar for yourself to say, how can I reach here? So I would say you need to be positive and be obsessed with your business. How does it feel to be in the beginning? <laughs> <laughs> um, I have time, I can travel the world and yeah. It's feel it's feel good. <laughs>